Today we are going to recapping anime, called Aquarian Evil. Humans still inhabit the planet Vega 12,000 years after the events of the Genesis Aquarian, but they are constantly in danger from extraterrestrial creatures known as abductors. These adversaries, who come from Vega's sister planet Altair, attack Vega in search of living people. In order to combat the abductors, Neo Diva was established as a countermeasure. They operate cutting-edge mechanical Aquarius suits and are rigorously divided into male and female groups. It is forbidden for boys and girls to interact. Even fighting on the same battlefield is prohibited. But when an advanced abductor mechanical suit enters the picture, things take an unexpected turn. Mikono and Amada, two teenagers, are included in the conflict. As Amada summons an Aquaria and initiates what is known as the Forbidden Union between a male and a female Aquaria, he unknowingly breaks a taboo. Amada is unaware of the extent of the consequences of his actions, which have stunned Neo Diva. How did he manage to call an Aquaria? From whom did he learn how to create a forbidden union? And how come Mikono could operate the mecha suit as well? Watch this video to the end to have a grasp of how the story played out. In the first scene of the series, a boy, Amada, is sitting alone in a theater. He is seeing a movie called The Skies of Aquaria. He is so engrossed with the movie that he doesn't realize that his father has entered the room. Even his father wonders why he is always watching the movie. You must be engrossed with Alicia who played Sylphie in the movie. His father says, Even though Amada loves the movie, it doesn't bring much audience. It turns out that Amada is also working in the theater with his father. Moments later, he is cleaning the theater room when Amada sees a girl sitting down alone, deeply engrossed with the movie. He is surprised to see someone who likes the same movie as him. The girl is literally shedding tears from what she is feeling from the movie. Amada talks to her before she finally realizes that she is already crying. She feels embarrassed, but Amada tries talking to her. He sees Alicia's image in the girl. He gets them to introduce each other before she leaves. The girl's name is Mikono Suzushiro, and the duo immediately gets along with each other. While they're talking, Amada gets excited, and it seems he is about to get lifted off the ground from excitement. He excuses himself and runs to his room. He opens a patch on his leg and adds three metal plates to each leg. After he is done doing this, he joins Mikono outside the theater so that they can have a fun time together. The duo takes a boat together. They pass through the town and talk about the events happening on their planet. Vega. Apparently, there are some people known as abductors who do come to the planet to cause problems and kidnap people. During their conversation, Amada touches Mikono. Suddenly, a flying cat jumps out of Mikono's hair and attacks Amada. The cat is trying to protect its owner. Amada is surprised that there is a flying cat. Mikono informs Amada that the cat's name is Shushu. After this, the duo stops to have a view of the park. Mikono talks about a hidden academy that trains elements. She says these elements are people with special powers. They are just like Alicia, and they are chosen to pilot Acarius. While they are talking, Amada gets excited again, and it looks like he is about to fly. He excuses himself to the restroom. Just then, abductors appear from the skies in their scary-looking robots. The robots start to attack the city and also kidnap people. Before the situation gets worse, M-type Aquarius show up to engage the intruders. Amada returns to where Makono is staying, and they can watch the fight from above. Out of nowhere, a large abductor shows up and goes after the Aquaria. The Aquarius has no answer to the abductor's skillful moves. It comes as a shock to them that the abductor has a pilot, unlike the rest of the robots that they have encountered in the past. Back at the HQ, the commander receives an order from above to send in the F-type Aquaria to support the M-type ones. This has never happened before. F stands for female, while M stands for male. The two have never been on the field together at the same time. The F-types arrive and they are able to provide support for the boys. However, they need to be careful not to merge with the boys. There is a stone that prevents this from happening. Even with the arrival of the F-type Aquaria, the large abductor still plays around with them. They can't seem to get a lock on him. He gracefully dodges all of their attacks while also dealing damage to them. During the battle, a statue collapses and almost falls on Makono, but Amada shields her. He takes in all the damage to keep her safe. The large abductor has subdued all the Aquaria. He's about to finish one off when he feels something behind him. He looks back to see Amada and Makono together. It appears that something is attracting him. The Aquarius try to defend Makono and Amada, but they suddenly get ejected from their robots. They find themselves back on base. The commander figures out that the Aquarius forcibly ejected the elements on their own. Amada figures out that they are in danger, and he has no choice but to reveal his power. He removes all the metal plates he has on his legs. This reduces the weight on his body. 
He is able to carry Makono and they fly from under the ruble. This comes as a shock to the abductor's pilot. Makono and Amada suddenly find themselves inside a Vector's cockpit. Vectors are the robots that the elements use as their weapons. They are basically aircraft that turn into Aquaria. Amada then tells Mikono that he will make use of a power he's been hiding. He calls out a forbidden name known as Aquarian. Immediately he does. His vector fuses together with the other vectors and their pilots. It comes as a shock when the F-types and the M-types fuse together and override the stone that prevents the process. The vectors all come together as one. They transform into one giant vector that stands tall above the city. The establishment in charge of battling the abductors is the Neo Diva. They make use of two types of Aquaria, F-type for females and M-type for males. The two vectors cannot merge together because there is a stone preventing it. The elements which are the same thing as the pilots of the Aquaria are kept in different dorms. They have a wall between the two dorms, which is known as the Berlin Wall. The males have no access to the females and vice versa. The boys are always eager to have access to the females, but there is no chance for them. The men are in a training session when they receive the alert that abductors have arrived. This brings us up to speed. The elements start to feel immense sensation from the merging of the vectors. This is the first time they will be feeling this kind of sensation. Male and female vectors are not allowed to merge because of the same reason. With the giant vector merging together, the Aquaria becomes one big robot with Amada as the chief pilot. The pilot of the abductor's robot is attracted to someone inside the Aquaria. He smiles evilly when he realizes that his target is right in front of him. Mikono is surprised that she is inside a vector's cockpit. Just then, one of the pilots, Cayenne, communicates with them. He asks if Mikono is okay. It turns out that he knows who Mikono is. Cayenne believes that Amada is a terrorist because of the way he hijacked the Vector. Mikono argues that Amada is no terrorist but he saved her. Cayenne informs the headquarters that there is a civilian couple inside of the robot. They try severing the connection but it is not working out. The commander reveals that Aquarian is different from Aquarius and it is the perfect form. It is able to withstand both males and females. It is not gender specific like Aquarius. It is counted as the perfect form. The abductor continues its attack on the Aquarian. Amada doesn't know how to handle Aquarian very well, and this gives the abductor the opportunity to keep hitting him. Instinctively, he activates a powerful energy blast from his head that forces the enemy away. Those at the base keep wondering who Amada is. He must be special for him to have synchronized with Aquarian. The abductor returns with another wave of attack that pushes the Aquarian to the ground. Suddenly, Abductor reinforcements arrive. They inform the large abductor pilot that he has been ordered to return. From their conversation, the pilot's name is revealed to be Kagura. Kagura is informed that their mission is over and they need to go back, but Kagura insists that he wants to keep fighting. The abductors attack the Aquarian. One of the female pilots, Zesica is forced to teach Amada how to use the robot's weapon. With one push from his hand, Amada is able to destroy the abductor's reinforcements. It is another surprise that Zesica's element can resonate with Amada. Since Kagura is free from those who want to take him back to their planet, he comes after the Aquarian once again. Cayenne's power also resonates with everyone because of the Aquarian effect. His power gives him the ability to see the future. They see a wedding with a funeral procession. Makono is the bride and it appears that the groom is Kagura. This vision keeps them on their toes because they want to know who he is. Kagura attacks the Aquarian and uses some metals to pin the robot down. Cayenne starts to blame Amada for everything that is happening. This takes Amada down memory lane. He has always been an outcast because of his powers. People prefer running away from him. He has been abandoned countless times. However, it seems the current situation is different. Makono is ready to stay with him no matter what happens. This is enough motivation for Amada, and he subconsciously powers up the robot. The Aquarian is able to break free from its bondage and fly up to the sky. The Aquarian grabs the abductor and pushes him into the air. It appears that Amada's power is gravity manipulation and this is what granted Aquarian the ability to fly. He pushes the abductor into space orbit. He pushes the abductor into a space rock. Kagura is stubborn and he charges toward them again, but a dimensional portal opens and Kagura is ordered to return home. He tries to break free but the portal sucks him in. The Aquarian falls back to Earth after this. Mikono and Amada are rescued from the ship. Amada is knocked out after being rescued, and there are plans to take him to the academy. Meanwhile, Kagura has made it to his home planet, and he informs his people that he has found the right woman for him. The leader of the abductors, Izumo, informs one of his assistants, Jin, that the Iguras that went to Vega to gather have lost their functionality. Most of it has become useless during transit. They need the Aguras for something important on their home planet, Altair. Izumo decides to put Jin in charge of operations even though Kagura might complain. 
Back in Vega, Amada wakes up in a strange room and he comes face to face with Cayenne. He starts asking questions and Cayenne is forced to summarize everything he will need to know for him. He informs Amada that he is currently in Neo Diva where elements are trained to pilot Aquaria. It dawns on Amada that he is currently in the academy that Makona was talking about. Cayenne adds that the pilot's job is to repel the abductors who came from another dimension. This sums up almost all of Amada's questions. What is left is for Cayenne to show Amada around the academy. He shows him around the classroom. Amada can clearly see that he is popular because of his ability to pilot an aquaria without training. He was also able to merge the aquaria together. After this, Amada is taken to the cafeteria. He can see the wall separating the female academy from the male which is known as the Berlin Wall. Cayenne informs him that he is brought to the academy because he needs to be tested. Makono is also in the female area getting tested. Amada wants to know more about Makono, but Cayenne refuses to let out. Cayenne then asks Amada what his relationship with Makono is. Amada states that he just met Makono so he doesn't have much of a relationship with her. Amada is already worried that Cayenne is Makono's lover. He heaves a sigh of relief when he finds out that Cayenne and Makono are siblings. Cayenne talks about how he has always protected his sister from harm. The two almost get into a brawl when Amada talks about Makono in a romantic way. The voice of instructor Donar stops the duo. He orders Amada not to eat for the time being because he will be going for an aptitude test. There is a possibility that he will be kept at the academy depending on the test results. Amada has changed the status of Aquaria to Aquarian because of the stunt he pulled the day before. Moments later, Amada is taken to the lab for his test. From the test result, it is deduced that his power is gravity manipulation. This explains why he can fly. His power gets activated whenever he feels emotional distress. His power is a reaction to his emotional status. The power might get activated with his need to protect a loved one. The commander is worried that the test results still do not explain how the Guy Stone got destroyed. With further analysis, they are able to find out that there are memories of a Aquarian buried deep in his head. Suddenly, the machine starts to malfunction, and it stops working. The commander is informed that someone interfered in the test to prevent them from completing the psychoanalysis. Now in the female academy, Zessica, who merged with the boys, starts to narrate her experience to them. They're all interested in this, and they wish to merge with a boy too. The class president, Mix, tries to tell the girls that it is forbidden for them. She reminds them that they have the Berlin Wall because of this. Mix asks Makono some basic questions, but she provides no tangible answer to them. Mix wants to know about Cayenne, but Makono simply says she is not living with Cayenne again and doesn't know what he is up to. Mix assumes that Makono also has elemental powers since it runs in their family. That night, Amada hears the sound of a piano playing while he is trying to sleep. He decides to go check it out. He makes his way outside the dorm but falls into a pit. He comes across another cadet, Andy. Andy is the one digging the hole, and his aim is to do it till he reaches the girl's dorm. Andy's elemental power allows him to dig through the soil very easily. Amada offers to help because of his urge to see Mikono. They start digging furiously and they soon reach the female dorm. They make an opening and Amada is surprised to see Mikono standing right there. Mikono is embarrassed, and she runs away. He just lost his opportunity to speak to Mikono. The duo quickly jumps back into the hole before they are discovered by the guards. The following morning, the commander informs the boys to get ready for their monthly battle simulation. He reads out the three names that will pilot the Aquaria. Cayenne, Andy, and Amada are the three people who will wield the Aquaria. This comes as a shock to everyone because Amada is still a new student. When the simulation begins, Amada is not initially serious but he changes his mind when he realizes that the girls are also watching the simulation. He activates his power and he easily fuses with the other vectors. With one burst of energy, Amada easily destroys his enemies, and the game is forced to quit before time. Back on Altair, it appears that they are waiting for the emergence of a man named Sir Mykaj. Up next, Donar is informed that Makono will be sent home. She has been tested for elemental powers and she has none. There is also an Aquarian tragedy that happened years ago that Donar would rather not speak about. Moments later, Mikono is getting ready to leave. She is sad that she won't get the chance to say goodbye to Amada. Zessica approaches her and asks her if she is aware that she is the one Amada apologizes to during the simulation battle. Zessica teases Mikono that she must have a strong hold on Amada for him to have gone to such length. On the other end, Andy just found out that the hole he dug in the female dorm has been filled up. He cannot easily dig another one in that same path because it was filled by a power user. He suspects that one of the girls is behind the ceiling of the hole, Amada wonders if he has considered the fact that it might actually be a guy and not a girl. Amada hears the same piano tune he heard the day before and he asks about it. Andy tells him that the one playing the piano is Shrade. He is considered the number one student in the academy. 
Amada wants to know him and he makes his way to the room where Shrade is playing the piano. Shrade is not surprised to see him because he has been expecting Amada. Shrade and Amada are still getting to know each other when Cayenne enters the room to find Amada. He is clearly out for blood. He is planning to beat Amada up because of the stunt he pulled during the simulation training. Shrade warns Cayenne that he doesn't tolerate fighting in his vicinity, but Cayenne wouldn't listen. Cayenne grabs Amada by the neck. Shrade starts to play his piano, and this affects Cayenne psychologically. The effect of the piano makes Cayenne see another vision where his sister is dying. Andy informs Amada that Shrade's elemental power allows him to touch people's minds with sounds. Shrade stops playing the instrument, and Cayenne gets a hold of himself again. He tries to attack Shrade, but he easily dodges the attack. Just then, the alarm goes off to warn them that abductors have arrived and they are causing havoc in a particular region. The elements are immediately summoned. Andy, Cayenne, and Amada are the three people who will take out the Aquaria to battle the enemies. The trio soon rolls out, and they merge together to become Aquarian. Mikono is on a boat away from the academy when she finds out that the abductors are around. She feels a certain feeling that something might go wrong. She is worried about Amada because of this. The Aquarian is on the battlefield, but they are surrounded by the enemy forces. The enemy's movements are much faster than before. It appears that they have a commander hiding somewhere. They need to figure out where the commander is and get rid of him quickly. They have no idea how to do this, and someone suggests that they make use of their trump card, Shrade. Shrade begins to play a tune that reaches Cayenne and allows him to pinpoint where the puppet master is hiding out. They are able to figure out that he is hiding out in space. He is hooked on one of the stars. The puppet master is Jin, and he is using the battle to gather data. They have no weapons that can reach him where he is. The abductors have the Aquarian surrounded and pinned down. They have their weapons hooked inside of the Aquarian already, and there is no escape. Elsewhere, the boat transporting Mikono suddenly changes course and heads for the academy. The driver of the boat grabs Mikono and takes her to the operation room. The man has a hat covering his head. He barges into the room and orders that they eject Andy and replace him with Mikono. Donar rushes toward the man and takes off his disguise. It turns out that the man is none other than their supreme commander, Zen Fudo. Zen tells Mikono to get aboard the Aquarian, but she argues that she has no powers. Zen tells her that her presence is enough to give Amada and Cayenne the boost that they need. The duo is ready to do anything to protect her. Because of this instinct, they are bound to go beyond their limits. She agrees and she is immediately substituted for Andy. Cayenne and Amada are surprised to see Makono. With this, they are able to awaken Aquarian again. However, Cayenne is worried that something might happen to Makono. This is the vision he has always been having concerning her, and this is the reason he doesn't want her near the Aquarian. Makono manages to convince her brother that she will be fine. Makono joins hands with Amada, and this stimulates the Aquarian and its heart starts to beat. Aquarian uses a technique known as the Mugen Punch to extend its arm into space and chase Jin away from where he is hiding. Jin manages to escape, but he has collected enough data already. He is confident that Izuma will be pleased with him. Aquarian's arm extends around the globe and it eventually makes its way to the Academy. It hits the Academy and breaks the Berlin Wall. The boys and girls are able to see each other for the first time. They are about to rush into each other when Zen gives out a rule that romance is prohibited. Meanwhile, Sir Mikeage is awake on Altair. The students are still complaining about Zen's rule when the director arrives. The director is a girl, and no one expects her to be holding such a prominent role. Miss Suomi asks the commander why the director has not been around. He replies that the director and Zen have both gone on different journeys to solve the mystery of Aquarian. Their return simply means that they have clues concerning Aquarian. The mystery of Aquarian involves the story revolving around Sylphie and Apollon, two lovers who were yearning for each other and their excess resulted in destruction. This tale happened 12 years ago. They have been hiding this power because of this. Even though the power is forbidden, it seems they might have to depend on it once again. The enemy has gotten stronger, and they need to find a way to cut them off too. Donar seems to have an idea of what the group is saying, now in Altair, Jin is informed that his presence is required by Izumo. Jin honors his boss's request, and together, they analyze the data that Jin got from Vega. They can clearly see that there is a new technique that was used by the Aquaria in their last battle. Just then, Izumo is informed that Kagura has left the planet. He is heading for Vega alone. Izumo chooses not to stop him from leaving. At that same moment, a dimensional gate opens. Izumo immediately figures out that Sir Mikeage is awake. Back in Vega, the female students and the male students are having their first joint class together. The male students, especially Andy, are excited by this. He is happy to be around girls. This is what he has been looking for ever since. Even Amada has a red face upon seeing Mikono. A dart hits him on the bum to take him off the emotional hill that he is about to climb. 
To continue their class, the students will be taking a trip to the city. They are to take a stroll around the tower and the harbor. Before they leave, they are all handed a bracelet each. They are also to be divided into groups of three people each. The teacher starts calling out the groups and their members. Andy finds out that he is in group C. He is in the same group as Mix and Yunoha. Mix is known to not be a guy's favorite, and this might be a problem for Andy who likes girls. The students start receiving random electric shocks from the bracelets they are putting on. The last group is made up of Amada, Zesica, and Makono. They soon arrive at the location where they are to separate. The students also need to be back on the boat before the boat leaves. The students continue to receive electric shocks from the bracelets. Now in the operations room, we learn that the bracelets are a way to measure the students' emotions. This is one of the director's ploy to prevent the students from having high emotional connections. Once the bracelet measures their emotional status and realizes that it is getting high, the students receive a shock. The director reveals that a love encounter happened between Donar and his late lover, Nananan. Their love was unstoppable, but it ended up leading to catastrophe. Nananon dies, and Donar loses both arms. Love helps the Aquarian fight better, but they must also be careful about it. That the bracelet is to stop the students from getting emotionally attached. Donar doesn't want a repeat of what happened to him. Amada gets hit by a dart anytime he starts floating. He floats anytime he has any romantic feelings toward Makono. Donar is in the distance, shooting him with darts to prevent this. Back in the operations room, they are monitoring each group to see which is doing better. As Amada and his group go through the market, he floats anytime he comes close to Mikano. He has been shot several times, but this has not stopped him. Donar is now worried that he doesn't have enough darts to stop Amada. Mikono, on the other hand, is glad that Amada is always floating for her. This signifies that she's the only person in Amada's heart. However, Zesica touches Amada and he floats for her too. This worries Mikono because she might actually be wrong. Meanwhile, we get to find out that Kagura has infiltrated Vega and he is searching for Mikono. Later on, Amada's group is at the arcade when Mikono angrily walks away when she sees Amada floating for Zesica again. Amada chases after her to try and convince her that he only cares for her. They get to the top of the tower. The scenery resembles an image from the movie that they both love. There's a man on the roof and he starts to play a romantic tune for the duo. This draws the duo closer. The bracelet starts to throb. Those in the operations room can clearly figure out that Mikono is developing a romantic feeling. Donar doesn't have an angle on the two and there is no way for him to stop the process. Amada and Mikono's love continue to grow with each second that goes by. Just then, Kagura shows up on the tower. He drags Mikono away from Amada. As he does this, Mikono faints from the electric shock delivered from her bracelet. Zen and the others quickly figure out that Mikono didn't pass out because of love, but from a forbidden encounter. The moment the authorities find out that an abductor is active in the city, all the elements are ordered to return to the academy. Kayan doesn't want to return to the academy because he knows that his sister is in danger, but Shrade tells him to put his duty first. He's a fighter and should not let his emotions cloud his judgment. Shrade offers to stay behind. Now on the tower, Amada tries to defend the now unconscious Mikono from Kagura. He threatens him and Amada initially takes a step back. Kagura claims that Mikono is his woman and he doesn't want anyone to come between them. Amada is not ready to give up on Mikono. He pushes Kagura and Mikono falls from his hand. Amada grabs Mikono and jumps off the tower. The wings beneath his foot appear and he is able to fly off with Mikan. Kagura is thinking of going after Amada but he suddenly feels a sharp pain in his head. He looks back to see Shrade playing the guitar. Shrade is using this instrument to mess with Kagura's head. Now in Altair, Izumo and Jin are having a meeting when Mekage appears to them via holographic display. Mekage was the one who helped Kagura open the gate so he could go to Vega. Kagura claims that there's a rare Igura that he's going after. Mekage wants to see how powerful and unique the Igura is. After Mekage's departure, Izumo tells Jin to continue to monitor Kagura. If it comes to head, they will forcibly collect his suit, Mithragnis from him. Kagura goes to one of the pods in the facility, and it turns out that Alicia is being kept in one of the pods. Back on Vega, Kagura tries to attack Shrade, but he whaley maneuvers and dodge his attack. Kagura is frustrated, and he opts to escape instead of fighting Shrade. He wants to go after Mikono too. While Zesica and the rest of the team are heading to the academy, Zesica asks Donar why Shrade is not allowed to fight in battles. Donar then tells them the story behind Shrade. Shrade has loved playing music from the start, however, his music has a negative effect on people, and this effect made his parents eliminate each other. And after this, Shrade was taken in by bad people and he was used for their own benefit. He became an agent of destruction. Later on, Shrade was scouted personally by the director. However, they find out that Shrade's life shortens any time he pilots an Aquarian. He is too powerful for the energy that the machine can resonate. This is the reason Shrade was taken off the list of pilots. Kagura is busy searching the city for Mikono and Amada. He decides to make use of his suit. He knows that he will get a better view of the city inside his suit. He enters his suit, but the Aquarian also arrives at the same time. Kayan realizes that Kagura is donning the same monster suit from before. Zen informs them that the suit that they are looking at is called the Mithra Gnis. Kagura starts traveling through the city, and the Aquarius find it hard to stop him. Cayenne and his aircraft have been knocked to a wall. Mikono and Amada are hiding out in an abandoned house. Zesica is trying to get Kagura off the city, but she is not having much luck on that end. Moments later, Kagura finds Amada and Mikono. Cayenne has managed to get out of the wall he is stuck in, 
but he now has a broken arm. He won't be able to pilot his vector easily. Shrade sees this, and he volunteers to take over from Cayenne. Cayenne doesn't want him to because it is dangerous, but Shrade insists. Shrade takes over the vector, and Cayenne is ejected. To turn the battle on its head, Andy is also ejected, and Amada takes over the vector. Amada tells Makono to leave the area. The authorities are worried about Shrade piloting a vector. The vectors come together and they become Aquarian. Shrade's power is able to intensify Zesica and Amada's powers. A new form of Aquarian is created with Shrade piloting the vector. Aquarian stands in front of Kagura and his suit. Aquarian charges toward Kagura, and they are able to deliver a fatal blow. Shrade is feeling all the effects of the fight. He clearly looks exhausted already. Kagura also feels the effect of the attack. His powerful suit is damaged by Shrade's power. He wants to continue fighting even though he is well aware that he will lose. Just then, Jin appears and forcefully takes Kagura back to Altair. Mikono watches on as Kagura flies into space. Shrade is now unresponsive inside the Vector's cockpit. Later on, the director visits Shrade in the hospital. She tries convincing him to stop risking his life. Shrade doesn't seem to mind if his life is in danger or not. He just wants to use his powers without the fear of death. Back in school, Andy is protesting that the girls and boys are not sitting together. He believes that there should be some kind of connection between them. Most of the boys are in accordance with Andy. They support the notion that he is trying to push. The girls are also in the same accordance with him except Mix. Mix insists that boys are impure and girls shouldn't relate to them. The teacher decides to make a ballot. The ballot is to pick their sitting partners. Andy is glad about this decision. He is excited that he will finally have a lady to sit down with. The ballot is prepared and each student picks their slots. Amada and Makono end up sitting together. Andy's unlucky run continues and he ends up sitting with Mix. Mix is the worst person he can pray for, but he has no choice. Cayenne and Shrade will also be sitting partners. This is turning out to be fun because Cayenne sees Shrade as his rival. Meanwhile, Cayenne has gone to pick up Shrade from the hospital. Shrade calls Cayenne his good friend while Cayenne sees Shrade as a jerk. The seat beside Andy is occupied by a stuffed animal. They wonder who the stuffed animal belongs to. It then dawns on Andy that there is a rumor about the stuffed animal. There was once a female student in the academy who was always used to herself. She had no friends. The loneliness was too much for her, and she disappeared from the academy one day. The stuffed animal was her only friend, and it was reported that the stuffed animal could be seen wandering the school at night. Zessica doesn't believe the rumor one bit. Back on Altair, Jin is busy running battle simulations. He is trying to make use of the data he has collected to perfect his suit and weapon. Kagura, on the other hand, has been grounded, and it might remain like that for some time. That night, Amada is busy cleaning the classroom when he sees Zessica looking at him. After he is done, he realizes that Zessica is still waiting. Zessica wants the two to leave the class together. It seems they are the only ones in the academic building at that hour. They get to the door to find out that it is locked. Amada can easily figure out that Zessica is scared, and that is the reason she is sticking with him. As they walk through the hallway, they run into the stuffed animal. The duo gets scared when they see the stuffed animal walking and talking to them. Zessica grabs Amada and the duo runs away. Meanwhile, Mikono is in the courtyard thinking about Kagura. She is still there when Amada and Zessica run out holding each other's hands. Makono immediately assumes that the duo has something going on. The following day, Zessica and Amada are trying to describe the event of what happened to their classmates when Makono cuts in. She jealously accuses the two of being lovers. Amada is shocked when he hears this, but there is no time to talk. The abductors have appeared once again. Their attention is needed to battle the enemies. Cayenne, Zessica, and Amada are sent out to the field to engage the enemy. The enemy ship appears to be more powerful than the ones they fought in the past. Zen tells them to avoid a direct hit from the ship they are to fly low when engaging the machine. It turns out that Jin is the one controlling the machine from a safe location. Aquarian soon gets hit by the enemy. Their energy level is dropping and the suit is becoming critically damaged. They are forced to split up into vectors for easy maneuvering. They need a solution to the problem at hand. Just then, the commander suggests an element change. Andy will be substituted for Yunoha. It turns out that Yunoha is the so-called mysterious stuffed animal. The stuffed animal gets into the pilot seat and changes into a girl. She talks to her fellow comrades and this comes as a shock to them. They are surprised that she can talk. She then apologizes for scaring Amada and Zessica the night before. She informs Makono that the duo is telling the truth, and they have nothing going on behind the scenes. She asks her comrades to trust her and fight with her. With this, the vectors merge together to become Aquarian again. Jin is confident that he can take on the Aquarian easily. He shoots a blast at them, but it passes through them. It turns out that Yunoha's power grants them transparency. They are completely transparent from the enemy's attacks. They appear invincible, but they are still there. They charge toward the enemy and deliver a fatal 
fatal punch that pushes the enemy back. The machine is destroyed, and Jin concedes defeat. However, he has been able to collect new data from the fight. After the battle, Mikono apologizes for jumping to conclusions about Amada and Zesika. The team assures Yunoha that they are there for her, and there is no need for her to be shy. It turns out that she has been in their midst ever since, but she has been using her power to hide herself. She now feels comfortable, and touches Amada. Amada begins to float as usual. It then dawns on Zesika and Mikono that Amada floats for literally everyone. Up next, Andy explains why he is digging holes. He believes that there are unexplored worlds in the soil, and he wants to find these worlds. In other words, the world he is talking about is the female dormitory. He is digging a hole to get to the female changing room. He digs ferociously and soon breaks through to an opening. Inside the small room, he finds a small book inside the room. He excitedly picks up the book so he can show his friends. His friends are busy looking at the pictures they took when Andy shows up. He tells them about the book he just found. He says the book might be the Book of Twin Stars. This is a legendary book that allows anyone who obtains it to operate Aquarian at will. They ask him how he got the book, but finds it hard to tell them. He cannot tell them that he was aiming for the female dorm when he came across the book. Meanwhile, Donar and the rest want to know what Director Kriya has found while she was away on her journey, but she refuses to give out any tangible information. The following day, Andy tells his classmates that he has read the book. He found a particular rule inside one of the chapters. He claims that the rule is something very important to wield Aquarian. The rule states that they should always wear white or blue socks. With the analysis he is making, his friends quickly figure out that the book he found is not a legendary book, but the school's handbook. His mood immediately goes down when he realizes this. He thought he had found something good. Now on Altair, Izumo is seen discussing with Jin. He laments about the number of Iguras that they have collected that have died in transit. It turns out that the Iguras they have been talking about are women. He narrates that an unknown epidemic broke out that eliminated all the women on the planet. There are no women on the planet currently. There is no way to reproduce since there are only men on the planet. All the women they have abducted in the past have died in transit. They need a woman that can survive the dimensional transit. Kagura has always believed that Makono is the person they need. To confirm if Kagura is right or not, Izumo decides to send Jin to Vega once again. He will be piloting the machine physically this time around. There is no need to use a remote control so he can assess the situation very well. Jin accepts the tasks and begins to modify his suit once again. He uses the data he has collected before to build a more durable suit. Now on Vega, Amada and his friends are busy discussing the school and dress code. Mix accuses Zesika of opening too much of her body. She says a woman is not supposed to expose herself too much. Mikono is already tempted to wear revealing clothes because it is pretty obvious that Amada has been taking a glance at Zesika's body. Just then, the alarm goes off that an abductor is active in the city. The elements are required to move out and engage the enemy. Zen sends out Amada, Mikono, and Zesika. The vectors merge together to form Aquarian. Meanwhile, the fight between Jin and the Aquarian is being projected for Kagura. He is in pain as he watches Jin hurt Mikono. Mikono and the rest have no answer to Jin's ultimate suit. He is already prepared for every attack that they might come up with. He makes life worse for the team and hits them with infill shots. These attacks don't do external damage. It goes directly into the system and hurts the operators. Their clothes start to rip off and the Aquarian is forced to split up into vectors. Jin chases after Zesika. Zesika instinctively dodges an attack that would have ended her. They are able to figure out that their body can sense the attack once it is exposed. Because of this, the trio starts ripping off their clothes. Even Mikono, who is shy, is forced to rip off her clothes to increase her power level. Their power level shoots up the roof and they are able to form back into one. The more they get embarrassed, the higher their power level goes. Jin shoots at them, but they easily dodge the attack. Jin realizes too late that Aquarian has gotten close to him. They land a powerful blow that destroys Jin's suit. After they are victorious, Makono returns to his shy self. Zen informs the group that offense is the best defense. He is trying to encourage a more shameless fight. Later on, Zesika manages to obtain a cute picture of Amada that she keeps close to herself. On Vega, Izumo and his comrades are worried that they have not received any contact from Jin. The machine he was operating was completely destroyed, but there is no sign that he was killed inside the machine. Jin is very important and they can't afford to lose him. He is the last son of Altair. Some of Jin's dearest friends are angry that they are not receiving permission to go after Jin. They believe that Jin is in trouble and the higher-ups are doing nothing about it. The three of them are talking about this when Mikaj appears to them. He uses his power to increase their will to save Jin. The trio doesn't mind breaking the rules to save their friend. In the next scene, Andy wakes up to find out that the holes he dug have all been filled up. This is getting frustrating for him. He is very sure that the culprit is a girl, but Amada argues that it might be a boy. Meanwhile, Makono is eating in the cafeteria. Zesika teases her about about Amada. She argues that she has no romantic feelings toward Amada. 
Zessica suggests that she leaves Amada for him, but Makono doesn't give any response. It appears that Zessica is getting very interested in Amada. Elsewhere, the director is worried that the darkness in Shrade's heart is getting worse. Cayenne is also worried that Shrade is not fit to fight in battles. Later on, Andy and Amada get down to digging holes. Amada wonders why Andy is always digging holes. Andy gives the same response as before. He is doing this to unravel the hidden worlds in the ground. Andy believes that there is a whole new world underground that has their own cultures. However, everything Andy is talking about is the women's bathroom. Just then, the holes start filling up again. They are pushed out of the hole, and they come face to face with the person who has been blocking the holes. It is none other than Mix. This comes as a shock to Andy. The duo are a rival, and it now turns out that they both have opposite powers. An argument breaks out between the duo. Mix wonders why Andy is digging holes, why Andy wonders why Mix is filling them. While they are busy arguing, Zen is in the distance, and he is watching them. He already has an idea when he sees this. He returns to the operations room to talk about Mix and Andy being in the same group. Shortly afterward, Andy and Mix are brought to the docking station. Zen wants them to pilot the vectors and possibly merge together to form Aquarian. The duo refuses the offer. The training session begins and all the duo does during the session is argue. They keep arguing about who is wrong or right. The simulation ends up getting interrupted without any desirable result. After the training session, the duo are given a punishment to serve. They are locked in a room where Mix is forced to make holes and Andy is ordered to fill things up. Andy teases Mix and asks why she hates men so much. He wonders if he hates her father like that too. Her mood changes just as Andy makes mention of her father and she doesn't utter a word till they leave the room. Later on, Mikono tells Amada why Mix hates holes. Apparently, Mix's father was a reporter, but he left with a woman. This must have left a big hole in her, and this is the reason she hates holes. She has a big wound in her heart that hasn't healed up. The following day, abductors show up in Vega as usual. These are Jin's comrades who are looking for him. To combat the enemies, Zen orders Mikono, Mix, and Andy to move out together. He wants them to get together and learn how to work together. Andy is fired up that he will finally be able to merge with Mix but Mix doesn't want that. She goes after the enemies alone, but Andy stops her. He reminds her that she cannot take on the enemies alone. Andy and Makono try to convince her to let go of the hole in her heart. Mix listens to them and tries merging with them, but it fails. She is not giving it her all, and this leads to the disastrous formation. Andy gets hit in the process, and it is Mix's fault. Andy is injured, and Amada quickly substitutes for him. Andy is returned to base, but he still has a connection with Mix. Amada and Makono go after Mix, and they convince her to merge with them. She agrees to merge with them, and this is her first time doing so. She feels an incredible sensation in her heart as she does so. It turns out that Makono's power is to create connections between the elements. They form a powerful Aquarian, and Mix uses her power to fill the holes in the enemy's body armor. As they try to shoot the Aquarian, they get destroyed by their own weapons. Mix has filled all the holes in the armor, and there is no way for their artillery to make it out. Mix has finally been able to get over her fear of merging with a guy. After the battle, Mix and Andy still end up arguing with each other. It appears that this is their own way of creating a connection with each other. On the other hand, Makono and Amada are sharing a romantic moment when Zen stops them. He reminds them that there is no option for romance in the Academy. Zessica is in the distance, looking at the duo. The camera shifts to another angle to reveal that Jin is alive. He is watching the Academy from a distance. Soon afterward, Jin makes his way to the Academy, and he is introduced to the students as the new candidate transferring from another Academy. Jin is overwhelmed when he sees the girls in class. He is surprised that there are so many rare Aguras that he can choose from. After the introduction, Jin is swarmed by girls. He is still new to this, and he has no no idea how to reply or interact with them. Cayenne takes Jin through the usual tour of the school. He takes him to where the Berlin Wall is partially broken. After this, he is taken to the operations room, simply known as Neo Dieva's hub room. This is where they manage strategies and tactics for Aquarian. Jin seems lost when Cayenne mentions Aquarian. He has no idea that Aquarian is the same as the mechanical suit they usually fight. Even Cayenne is surprised that Jin has no idea what an Aquarian is. Just then, Amada shows up during the tour. He and Cayenne start arguing as usual. Jin uses the opportunity to sneak away from them. He makes his way to the hangar where the weapons are kept. He takes a quick study of the room. The following day, he contacts Izumo and gives him a report of the situation. Izumo tells him to come back alive and make sure to bring back a suitable Igura. Jin narrates that humans use primitive technology compared to theirs. This is why he was able to easily hack into the Academy's system and put himself inside their databank. He needs to find the strongest Igura as quickly as possible. He has a device with him that allows him to carry out his task with ease. In the next scene, Jin sees Andy and Mix arguing with each other. This comes as a surprise to him. 
He doesn't know why the duo is arguing because of holes. After this, Jin accidentally enters the female restroom. The girls gang up on him and are about to crucify him. Yunoha stops them and reminds them that he is new to the school and this might be the reason he made the mistake. After all, he doesn't know his way around yet. He is saved by Yunoha, and he retires to the male dorm. He locks himself inside his space. He ignores Andy and Amada who are asking him if he is interested in digging holes. Up next, Jin and Yunoha are sitting across from each other in the class. Mikono and Amada soon join Yunoha. Yunoha talks to them about Jin. She believes that Jin is in the same position as her when she first came to the school. People were trying to talk to her but she was used to herself. People later left her alone and she vanished into darkness. She doesn't want Jin to end up like her. She wants them to interact with him so that he can feel comfortable. Meanwhile, Shrade has gone to see Kayan. He reveals that something feels off for the past couple of days. He has been hearing strange noises since the abductor they fought last disappeared. He wonders what is wrong. Later on, Jin is in the library when Yunoha runs into him. His device falls off, but he quickly picks it up and hides it. Yunoha sees it before he can hide it, but she doesn't bother to probe further. Yunoha decides to talk to him about being alone. She says being alone is bad and he shouldn't do it. While she is talking to him, tears run down her cheeks. She runs away out of embarrassment. Yunoha's tears easily get through to Jin. Kayan is now following Jin because he suspects that he is the pilot of the giant abductor that they fought. That night, Kayan sits in his space and gathers data on the girls. He finds out that Yunoha is the girl with transparency power. He remembers his battle against Yunoha where she made the machine disappear. She transfers all the data to Izumo and also makes mention of Yunoha's tears. Yunoha's tears must have broken him. Izumo tells him to grab Yunoha and take her with him if he feels worried. He stands up and tells Andy and Amada that he is ready to join them in digging holes. This is good news to the two and they quickly take Jin to the new hole that they are digging. This hole is in a discreet location that Mix might find hard to locate. The hole leads to the female dorm as usual. This has been Jin's plan all along. The moment they arrive at the dorm, he leaves the guys alone. He makes his way toward Yunoha's room. He throws a stone at her window to attract her attention. Yunoha comes to the window and he reveals his intention. He wants them to talk more. Yunoha is shy and she returns to her room. Jin is not ready to give up and he climbs the window. He is doing this when Kayan shows up. He fires a warning shot at Jin. Amada and Andy are shocked to see Kayan pointing a gun at Jin. Jin manages to make it to Yunoha's window and she comes out when she hears the gun. Kayan breaks free of Amada and Andy. He fires the gun at Yunoha and Jin. Jin subconsciously activates his power to block the blast. It turns out that Jin's power is a barrier creation. Jin doesn't even have the slightest idea that he has such powers. Now on Altair, Izumo leaves his chambers and goes to the cryo chamber. He stands in front of the pods and he stares into Alicia's eyes. He is in the middle of this when my cage shows up. Izumo reprimands Maikage for entering the room without his permission, but Maikage doesn't care. Maikage knows the reason why Izumo is spending some quality time in front of Alicia. Maikage narrates that after Altair lost all their women, they had no choice but to investigate Vega to keep their hope alive. Izumo was one of those that went to investigate. Alicia is one of the girls who was selected to return hope to Altair. However, she fell into a deep sleep while they were on their way to Altair. She has remained like that since then, but Izumo has not allowed anyone to touch her. In addition, Alicia left a son back in Vega. My Cage wants to eliminate Alicia because he sees her as waste goods, but Izumo stops him. Izumo reminds Mikage that no one is to touch Alicia. Mikage has no choice but to retreat. Izumo tells Mikage that Jin has infiltrated the nest of the mechanical angels. By mechanical angels, he is talking about Aquarian. There is hope that he will find someone useful to them. Mikage returns to his chambers where Kagura is being held captive. Kagura is trying hard to break out, but he doesn't have the strength or the will to do so. Mikage starts to say some hurtful things to Kagura concerning Makono. He wants him to break free if he really means business. He wants Kagura's love to be reborn. Kagura gets mad at the things Mikage is saying. He transforms into a beast and breaks out of his confinement. He charges toward Maikaj, but Maikaj tells him to set out on a journey of love if he wants to satisfy his thirst for love. Kagura, in his beast mode, leaves Maikaj and heads to the hangar. He easily knocks out the guards to gain access to the hangar. The alarm goes off immediately. Meanwhile, Maikaj reveals his true intentions. His aim is not to find the true Igura, but to awaken the mechanical angel of Genesis that sleeps in Vega. Now on Vega, Kayan and Jin have both been locked up. Jin is locked up because he snuck into the female dorm while Kayan is locked up because he pointed a gun at his classmate. Jin is the first to be released while Kayan is left in the cell to reminisce about his decisions. As he leaves his cell, Jin runs into Yunoha. She is holding her stuffed animal as usual. Meanwhile, the director and the rest of the higher-ups have found out that Jin is not who he claims to be. They decide not to act on it because they need his power. As long as he has power, he is a candidate for Neo Diva. On the other hand, Amada and his friends think Jin is mysterious, but that doesn't make him a bad guy. 
die. Zessica indirectly kisses Amada when she takes his drink and uses the same straw as him. Back on Altair, Kagura has successfully acquired his armor, and he is trying to leave the planet. Izumo orders that the gate be closed, so he won't have an avenue of escape. Andy approaches Amada and teases him about Makono. He is well aware that Amada has eyes for Makono. He advises Amada to work on it before he loses her. Amada reminds Andy that romance is prohibited. Andy then tells Amada that he can reserve Makono till the war with the abductors is over. However, he should let her know his feelings now before it is too late. Amada thinks about what Andy said and realizes that he is actually spitting facts. Amada remembers that Kagura is after Makono and he might be a problem. Amada wastes no time in approaching Makono immediately. The earlier the better for him. Back on Altair, Izumo informs Kagura that he cannot allow him to leave because he is acting irrationally. Kagura doesn't care about Izumo's opinion. He just wants to leave. He is ready to destroy the city to achieve his goal. He attacks the city, and Izumo is forced to send the military after him. Izumo can also see that Kagura's power has increased immeasurably. He wonders where he got such power from. Meanwhile, Mikage is providing Kagura with the support and strength he needs from his chambers. Kagura suddenly realizes that the machines have withdrawn from the battlefield. He looks to his front to discover that powerful artillery has been put in place to attack him. Powerful projectiles are launched at him to take him off balance. On the other planet, Zesica stands in front of the mirror and wonders why Amada doesn't like her the way he likes Mikono. She gets a quick vision of Mikono and Kagura while she is standing in front of the mirror. Meanwhile, Amada has taken Mikono to the riverside to discuss his feelings with her. He wants to ask her about her plans after the war is over. Continuing with Kagura's fight, he is bombarded with several artilleries and he falls to the ground. The machines surround him with the belief that he is defeated. Just then, Kagura regains his strength and blasts all of the machines away. He powers up his armor and his machine gains wings. He soars through the sky and cuts down his enemies. Mikaj opens the gate for him, and Kagura escapes from the planet because of Mikaj's assistance. Jin is on his own trying to eat a hot dog when two girls appear to him. They demand that they take cute pictures of him. He is shy, but they make sure to get the pictures they want. Elsewhere, Amada informs Andy that he is not able to talk to Makono about his intentions. Andy understands him, and he suggests that he help out. He talks about an exciting event that can be carried out to bring them together. Since the anniversary of the Academy is coming up the next day, day, he suggests that they create an event to spice things up. Andy gives Amada a letter to give to Mikono. They get to class and Amada throws the note to Mikono. She catches it and finds out that it is an invitation to the boys' dorm. Zessica gets a hold of this, and Amada invites her over too. Andy wonders why Amada is inviting Zessica when he needs to spend time alone with Makono. That night, Andy gets down to the preparation of their room. He is cleaning their room when Jin enters. Andy suggests that Jin join them also. This is an avenue for him to get used to girls. Moments later, Zessica and Makono enter the hole to get to the male's dorm. They are crawling through the hole when they find out that Yunoha is following them. She begs the two that she would like to tag along. Meanwhile, Shrade and Kayan are having a discussion in the yard. Shrade is aware that Kayan is being cautious around Jin, and that is the reason he ended up in detention. Just then, the girls emerge from the hole and they run into Kayan and Shrade. The girls make their way to Andy and Amada's room, but they are escorted by Kayan and Shrade. The girls reveal that they ran into the boys while coming. Andy quickly tells the guys that there is nothing irregular that they want to do. They just wanted to have a fun time together in preparation for tomorrow's anniversary. Zessica has been told that boys keep irregular pictures under their bed, and she goes directly to search under Amada's bed. She finds a picture of the actress Silphie, who is the same person as Alicia. Jin is surprised when he sees this. Everyone in the room recognizes Alicia. Alicia as the actress in the popular movie, Skies of Aquaria. Yunoha knows that Jin is a fan of Alicia and she asks him to show the group his device. Jin is forced to bring out the device and show them a video of Sylphie singing. The group decided to show the movie at the anniversary event. The following morning, Andy got down to the distribution of posters and created awareness for the people about the movie. Jin retreats to a private place to contact Altair, but he is not getting through. While he is in the middle of this, Yunoha sees him. Jin chases after believing that she is listening to his conversation. She tries to drag her back and accidentally tears her teddy. With tears in her eyes, Yunoha leaves the teddy for Jin. Meanwhile, Amada and Makono are busy setting up the projector that they need. This reminds them of the first time they met in the theater. During their conversation, Amada reveals that Alicia is his mother, and that is the reason he has the picture with him. Amada explains that his mother left him while he was still very young. He sees himself as the unwanted child, but Makono corrects him. Amada has no idea where his mother is. Amada asks if Makono will watch the movie with him, and she accepts. He gets excited and starts to float. Zessica sees this, and her anger grows more. While he is in his room, Jin figures out that he needs to apologize to Yunoha. He fixes the teddy, and is ready to return it to her. Now on Altair, 
Mikeage reveals that he is going to interfere in Jin's mission. Later on, Amada finds Yunoha and returns the teddy to her. He apologizes for tearing it. Yunoha assures Jin that she wasn't spying on him. She is well aware that people have their secrets, and she is ready to respect that. Yunoha thanks Jin for fixing the teddy and reveals that the teddy's name is Tama. The duo agrees to meet again that night for the movie. That night, Jin couldn't find his device anywhere. Unknown to him, Mikeage has used his powers to move the device. Yunoha finds the device where she and Jin are supposed to meet. She picks up the device and she hears some information Izumo is trying to pass along to Jin. Izumo reveals that Kagura will soon be upon them, and he needs to take the girl away before Kagura arrives. Jin appears, and Yunoha quickly hides the device, and doesn't even react like she has the device. Shortly afterward, the movie begins and everyone is seated to watch. While they are watching, Amada and Makono get close. Amada gets excited and he starts to float. Just then, the alarm goes off due to the presence of abductors. Amada and Makono run into Kagura, who just arrived on the planet. The duo gets scared, and they fall on a tree branch. Jin is worried, and he asks Yunoha to come with him. Kagura is busy searching through the base for Mikono. He smells all the girls in his presence to see if any of them are Mikono, but they are not. On the other hand, Yunoha informs Jin that he has his device with her. She reveals that she has heard the message that was meant for him. She brings out the device to show her, and he grabs it. There is an explosion beside them, and Yunoha passes out from fear. The authorities are already evacuating the students to avoid casualties. However, there are still 20 students missing. Makono, Amada, and Zesica have all managed to make it to the hangar, and they are ready to move out with their vectors. The trio merges in Aquarian and goes after Kagura. Kagura spots them and smiles. He has been looking for the Makono. It surprises the trio when Kagura calls Makono Silphy. Kagura charges toward Aquarian and they have no way to stop him. It is very evident that he is more powerful than the last time they fought. He has improved his suit and he is using more power. Zen explains that Kagura is using the power of reversal. It appears that he has elemental powers also. On the other hand, Jin has taken Yunoha to the hangar. She wakes up to see Jin preparing one of the vectors. Jin reveals his intention to take Yunoha with him to his planet. Yunoha wants him to join them in battling Kagura, but he refuses. He has his own mission to attend to, he says. The moment he activates the vector, those in the operation room receive the alert that one of the reserved vectors has been activated. The camera reveals that the traitor is Jin. Kayan is angry because he was right after all. He offers to go after Jin and stop him. The battle between Aquarian and Kagura continues. They wonder why Kagura is so much stronger than last time. They get to find out that he is being powered by a strange aura. The aura is being transferred from an ethereal tube directly from Altair. Mika is the one helping Kagura through the dimensional gate. The solution they have is to cut off the dimensional gate. Once they do that, they will be able to cut off the energy being supplied to Kagura. Just then, Mikeage appears to those in the operations room. This comes as a shock to everyone in the room because of his ability to use teleportation skills. It appears that Zen and Donar know who Mikeage is. Back in the hangar, Yunoha tries to convince Jin not to betray their trust, but he shrugs it off. His mission is more important to him. He powers up the vector and prepares to leave the planet. Kayan arrives there too late. Those in the operations room are attacked by Mikeage. Donar jumps on Suomi to protect her, and he passes out in the process. Suomi, Kreia, and Zen are the only ones left to interact with Mikeage. Zen and Mikeage start to talk like they have a relationship with each other. As Jin is about to pass through the dimensional gate, Yunoha sheds tears asking him to reconsider his choices because their friends need their help. Kagura has defeated Aquarian, and he opens up the hatch to carry out Makono. He is still celebrating his win when Amada regains consciousness. Amada activates the wings on his legs and snatches Makono away from Kagura. He didn't get far because Kagura shot him down. Kagura aims to kill Amada because he has no use for him. Back in the operations room, Maikage faces Zen and demands that he tell him the whereabouts of the solar wings. Just then, Donar regains consciousness and shoots Mikeage with a blast gun, but he easily blocks the attack. Mikeage decides to retreat for now. Kagura is about to eliminate Amada when Andy shows up. He traps him in one of his holes. Amada and Makono are able to reunite with Andy and Mix. Kagura angrily busts out of the hole with the intention of eliminating them. The arrival of other vectors prevented this. The director immediately orders the elements to merge again. It comes as a surprise when Jin and Yunoha return. Yunoha has convinced Jin to help out. Jin wants to merge with them also. Mikeage appears to Jin and decides that he needs to be punished for his betrayal. He touches Jin's head, and he gets injured. Jin comes out fine from the attack, and asks the elements to merge with him. The elements merge, and they have two Aquarian to battle Kagura. They knock Kagura into a rock, but he retaliates with a powerful counterattack. The team knows that they need to cut off the dimensional gate to defeat Kagura. Jin offers a solution for this. Jin activates his power, and all the other elements support him in creating a massive wave that destroys the gate. After they have successfully closed the gate, Kagura charges toward them 
but Jin uses all of his strength to protect his friends. Kayan finishes off Kagura and they come out victorious. However, the injury on Jin's forehead has grown worse and he becomes unresponsive. His device falls from his pocket and it plays a recording of how much he likes Yunoha. After the dust has settled, it is revealed that Jin didn't make it and he died from his injuries. Jin and several others were casualties during the battle. There is a funeral procession for the dead. They are laid in the church and they are given flowers. Back on Altair, Izumo has found out that Jin is dead. He blames Maikaj for Jin's death. Maikage is also trying to instigate a rebellion in the city. Maikage explains to Izumo that he had to do what he did to make life easy for them on Altair. Altair is dying out already and they need a solution fast. They need to get females to the planet to be able to continue the next generation. Izumo somewhat understands where Maikaj is coming from, and he asks for Jin's forgiveness. However, he hopes that Jin will not forgive him and Altair for what they did to him. Back on Vega, the dead are taken from the church and they are to be transported to the cemetery. Yunoha has refused to show herself since Jin died. She has locked her herself in a room and refuses to come out. Mikono is worried but they don't want to disturb her. They want her to have her space and grief alone. Mikono is alone when he is approached by Zen. Zen implores Mikono to approach Yunoha and try to get her out of isolation. Mikono initially refuses because she wants Yunoha to grieve in her own way. Mikono changes her mind when Zen informs her that Yunoha will lose herself if she continues that way. She will end up destroying herself without even realizing it. Mikono doesn't want this to happen, and she agrees to find Yunoha and get her out of the house. Mikono makes her way to where Yunoha is staying. She brings food for Yunoha to try and get her out of her bad mood. Yunoha blames herself for not just accepting to follow Jin. She claims that Jin would still be alive if she had followed him. Mikono wants Yunoha to follow her so she can pay her last respects to Jin. Yunoha is hesitant to leave the room, but she later agrees to. Elsewhere, Amada is busy packing Jin's belongings. The device falls off and displays Silphie's image. Amada wonders if his mother is currently on Altair. Shortly afterward, the students head to the cemetery. While they are on the boat, some of the students have already made up their mind to quit the school. The latest event has had a rather negative impact on most of the students, and they are all scared for their well-being. Mix tries to convince them, but Andy stops him. He doesn't want her to change the students' minds against their own will. Minutes later, they arrive at the cemetery and the dead are laid to rest. Just then, Zen tells Andy to dig multiple holes. He doesn't tell them what he wants the holes for. Kriya informs the students that they have been able to find out about Altair's mission. Their aim is to kidnap female elements and use them for reproduction purposes. Because of this, there are more battles to be fought. There are bound to be more dead in the course of the battle. If they are to survive the battle in front of them, Zen wants the students to die first. He tells them to get into the holes and bury themselves inside. He says the process is part of their training. Makono and some of the students get angry that Zen is being insensitive. Their comrades just died and this is what he is saying to them. Zen then explains why they need to do it. He wants them to cut off their attachment to the living. Shrade is the first to do as ordered, and he gets into the hole. Yunoha joins him and before Makono realizes it, all of them have jumped into the holes. The only ones left are Makono and Amada. Makono says she is not getting into the hole. Zen tells her that she is free to do whatever she wants to do. He gets behind Makono using using super speed and grabs Amada. He throws him into the hole and all the holes are immediately sealed up. The only person left on surface is Makono and the school authority. Moments later, some of the students ran out of the holes out of fear. Meanwhile, Mikaj has realized what Zen is trying to do. He is also burying Kagura alongside the students to make him powerful. Amada and his friends start to feel comfortable inside the holes. They are able to feel and connect through the silence. Mikono is worried about them and wants to dig them out, but soon finds out that her power connects them. Her friends are able to bloom like mushrooms because of her. her her friends are able to draw from her power and get the fear of death from their minds. Amada and the rest are reborn, and they burst out of their graves. Mikono faces Amada and greets him with a happy birthday. They were still celebrating their win when Kagura burst out of one of the holes. They had no idea that he was also being buried in the same cemetery as them. Zen can see the killer intent on Kagura's face, and he gets Kriya out of there. He leaves the students to battle Kagura. He wants to see how far they have come with their new revival. Dorn tells the girls to leave since Kagura is after girls. He draws his sword and charges toward Kagura, but Kagura uses his energy blast to destroy the sword and throw Donar off balance. Andy gets into the fight and he creates holes under Kagura. He falls into the holes and Mix fills them up. They believe that this is enough to stop Kagura, but he shocks them and bursts out of there. He grabs Mix but throws her away because she is not the one he wants. He is after Mikono, and even Mikono wonders why the guy is chasing her around. Amada tells his friends to get Mikono out of there before Kagura grabs her. 
Two of the students grab Mikono and take her away from the scene to keep her safe. Kayan charges toward Kagura, but he easily knocks him down. Amada tries his luck too, but Kagura is too strong for them. He cuts through them and turns into a beast to chase after the car carrying Mikono. He is stopped by Shrade. Shrade uses his sound skill to cause Kagura pain. He pins him down with the sound, but Kagura manages to break free of Shrade's charm and continues his chase. He soon catches up to them and he uses his reversal skill to change the car's gear from drive to reverse. The car crashes into a tree, and Kagura grabs Makono before anyone else can stop him. He takes Makono to a tower where he hides her. The search for Makono begins, and resources are thrown into this. Donar, Andy, Yunoha, and Mix are in the helicopter searching for the missing maiden. The rest of the team is to continue with the ground search. Makono wakes up to find herself at the top of a tower. Kagura is standing watch over, and he is making sure that the helicopter light doesn't see them. He uses his hand to cover her mouth when the helicopter is nearby to prevent her from making noise or calling the attention of her friends. Kagura tries to contact Maikaj to inform him that he has secured the package, but he is not receiving any response. He believes that Maikaj is not hearing him, but unknown to him. Maikaj is choosing to ignore him. Elsewhere, Zesika tells Amada not to worry himself too much about Makono. She is quite sure that Kagura will not do anything to hurt Makono. Amada asks her why she is very sure about what she is saying. She reveals that Kagura is Makono's man of destiny. Now on the tower, Kagura assures Makono that he won't hurt her. He even licks Makono's wound and calls her Silphy. Makono notices that this isn't the first time Kagura will be calling her Silphy. He then narrates the story. At the same time, Zesika is narrating the story for Amada. The story explains that the Tree of Life was withering and needed saving. In order to do this, the two lovers agree to separate with the promise of finding each other later on. No matter how far it takes, they promise to find each other. These two lovers are Apollon and Silphy. Kagura is revealed to be Silphy, and he sees Silphy's image in Mikono. This is the reason he has been chasing her. Zesika hopes that Kagura is truly Mikono's destiny, so she can have a chance with Amada. Just then, they hear a bang come from the tower, and they're able to deduce that Kagura is hiding out there. They run over to the tower, and Amada tries to get to Mikono, but he is stopped by Kagura. He falls to the ground, and Kagura comes after him. He tells Zesika to contact Kayan and tell him where they are. He wants to distract Kagura, Kagura so Makono will easily be rescued. He runs away, and Kagura chases after him out of rage. The helicopter soon finds Makono where she is hanging on. Kagura soon catches up to Amada and he beats him up. Amada tries to fight back, but he is no match for Kagura. Kagura punches him to the wall, and Amada passes out. While he is out, he thinks about the darkness and his connection to the darkness. Because he is already reborn in the darkness, he manages to find his way out of it. Amada finds a new source of power, and he starts to levitate. Kagura tries to blast him away, but an energy shield appears around him and stops the attack. Kagura is still cooking up another attack, when Kayan shows up and shoots him from behind. Kagura manages to throw Kayan off balance, and the gun falls to where Amada is. Kayan tells Amada to finish him off. Amada picks picks up the gun and is about to end Kagura when Makono shows up and stops them. She tells Amada not to end Kagura. Suddenly, flower petals appear and cover Kagura. Kagura then floats away with the petals. After Kagura's escape, Kreia calls Makono to her office. To punish her, she is banned from leaving her dorm. This is not her official punishment, but she is to serve this punishment before Kreia decides what to do to her officially. This is to punish Makono for allowing Kagura to escape their grasp. After she leaves the office, Mikono runs into Yunoha. Yunoha informs Mikono that she is there to support her no matter the situation she finds herself in. Mikono wonders why she did what she did. There are things she still does not understand concerning the matter. Meanwhile, Andy and Amada are listening to the duo's conversation. They are using their secret hole to spy on her and hear everything she is saying. The two guys return to their dorm to talk about what they heard. Amada wonders if their fate has really been decided 12,000 years ago. He wonders if they are really connected. Andy says there is the possibility of that. He is connected to Mix through holes, and Amada needs to find his own connection to Makono. Andy suggests that the duo is connected via Shushu. In order to get to Makono, Amada needs to please Shushu. In case you forget, Shushu is Makono's pet. Amada makes his way to the grocery store to buy things that he thinks Shushu will like. Zesika sees him leave the store and she is worried about what she told Amada. She feels like taking back her words, but Mix tells her that there is no need to. Back on Altair, the city that they are living in called the Iron Sea has started developing issues. The power output has decreased, and this has Izuma worried. He reveals that the city city was created by his mother, Oriza, and he needs to find a solution to the problem. In the next scene, Zen reveals his idea to take the elements through real combat training. They are to train like they are, on the battleground. This is to prepare them for the battles to come. He already has combinations for the training, 
there is Cayenne, Bianca, and Malloy. They are to fight against Amada, Zessica, and Makono. Soon afterward, the elements and their vectors arrive at the battleground. They merge together to become Aquarian. Zen tells them that they are free to use elemental powers against each other. They are to treat each other like enemies. It is Team Amada versus Team Cayenne. Cayenne wants to see if Amada has what it takes to protect his sister, and he is the first to pull the trigger. Team Cayenne is on the offense, while Team Amada remains on defense. Cayenne and his team go hard against Team Amada. Amada finds it hard to fight the opponent. Their elemental powers have received a boost since the grave training, but only Team Cayenne is making good use of the boost. Team Amada, on the other hand, is just sitting ducks. They have no reply to everything Cayenne is throwing at them. Cayenne's Aquarian has the reach on them because it is built to engage in long-distance battles. Cayenne has also gained the ability to see three seconds farther into the future, so he is able to clearly predict the opponent's movement and tactics. During the battle, Amada needs some sort of motivation to get themselves out of the mess they are in. Zessica decides to tell Amada how she feels about him. She gets close to Amada and finds it hard to open her mouth. An attack is imminent, and the suit manages to dodge it. During this process, Zessica informs Amada that she loves him. Amada couldn't hear it because of the explosion. He asks Zessica what she was trying to say, but she can't bring herself to repeat it. Zessica realizes that the opportunity might not present itself again. She holds Amada's head and tells him to his face that she loves him. Her words echo through the whole area, and those in the operations room are left dumbfounded. Just as she said this, Amada's Aquarian starts to move on its own. It has reached some sort of evolution because of love. The Aquarian Evo creates a powerful Mugen punch that leaves everyone dumbfounded. Zen tells those watching that this is the start of the forbidden love. The Mugen Punch creates a series of images. They see another Aquarian that is not theirs. They see two men battling each other, and one of them resembles Zen. Mikono seems to know the other person, but she has no idea where she knows him. It turns out that the images they are being shown are from 12,000 years ago. It is actually Sylvia, and not Silphy. The punch causes a massive explosion that disrupts the video connection. There is also the possibility that the island is completely destroyed. When when the dust settles, they find out that the two Aquarians are okay. However, the entire island is destroyed. The team wonders what sort of power they have just unlocked with the forbidden love. Zessica is aware that her confession of love is what caused the sudden rise of a power that almost killed everyone. Upon returning to the academy, Amada tries talking to Zessica, concerning what she said, but she finds it hard to do so. Zessica tells him that there is no need for him to stress himself. She understands him, and she is not putting any pressure on him. Zessica walks away, but Amada tries dragging her back. While they are doing this, Mikono sees the two and Amit quickly leaves Zessica's hand. Mikono gets jealous and runs away. Amada tries to follow her, but Shushu jumps on his face and scratches him to dissuade him from following them. Later that day, Mikono finds Zessica where she is reminiscing about her decisions. Zessica opts not to talk about the events of the day. On the other hand, Mix is angry that some of them are still thinking of romance, even though they have battles to fight. Amada is receiving romance lectures from his friends inside the dorm. Just then, Amada and the rest are summoned by Zen and Kreya. It is an emergency, and they need to to report immediately. Zen informs the team that he is sending them on a top secret mission. The details of the mission, the location, and the contents of the mission are all hidden, so there will be no answer to any of their questions. The Vectors have been programmed to take them to the site of the mission. The Vectors have also been stocked with supplies to make their mission easy. The following day, the students begin their journey to the unknown location. Sumoy is the only adult with the students. She has no idea what their mission is about too. The only people who know about the details of the mission are Kreia and Zen. Amada suspects that they are being sent on a mission to dig out the mythic Aquarian. Mikona wonders if it won't be dangerous to dig out the mythic Aquarian. Meanwhile, Mikaj is also monitoring the situation, and he believes that Zen is already making the first move. Soon afterward, they arrive at an island which appears to be their destination. Upon getting there, the commander tells them them that they are free to do whatever they want while they await further instructions on what to do. Kriya informs the students that there are swim suits inside the vectors for them to use. Moments later, the boys sit down to fish. While they are doing so, Mix and the rest of the girls are busy playing. Mix is playing with bananas when she accidentally hits Andy in the head. She takes Andy to the ship to treat his injury. After she is done, Andy stops her from leaving. He wants to confess his love for Mix, but he needs to find the courage to do so. Meanwhile, Zessica is now with the rest of the team. She has secluded herself. She is enjoying the peace and quiet when Mikono finds her. The duo decides to stay together. Andy keeps stuttering and eventually lets it out that he wants to fill Mix's hole. He meant to say he wanted to fill the hole in her heart but said the wrong thing. Mix gets mad and punches him in the head. She angrily leaves the ship and abandons him inside. Mikono and Zessica are busy discussing what the boys want when the weather suddenly changes. Meanwhile, Andy is inside the ship. He feels sad about his rejection. He feels like getting buried inside a hole. He subconsciously starts
starts to dig a hole where he is sitting. Outside the ship, a dimensional gate opens, and an abductor surfaces from the gate. Kayan, Malloy, and Amada quickly don their aquarium to fight the abductor. Mix and the rest enter the ship to take refuge in the hole Andy is digging. He continues digging without having a particular location that he wants to stop at. He has no idea that he has already dug a very deep hole. Shortly afterward, he makes an opening and falls into some sort of cave that contains an unknown object. Just then, Andy and all of those that are in the hole are ejected from it. They find themselves back on the surface. They suddenly find themselves inside the vector. All of the students are now present inside the vector, and they can all wield it together to face the abductor. The weather is getting colder with each minute that goes by. They charge toward the abductor with their immense power and deliver a powerful Mugen punch. The abductor is destroyed, and the students come out victorious. Back on Altair, Mike Cage is able to figure out that some of the components he is looking for are on the island. However, the main component of the Solar Wing has not yet been found. Upon returning to the Academy, Zessica resumes with a new outfit, an outfit that doesn't expose her belly. Her friends are surprised as to why she changed her dress style. Zessica approaches Makono to tell her that she doesn't mind having a one-way love with Amada. She is aware that Amada doesn't feel the same toward her, but she is not ready to stop loving him. Up next, Kriya is informed that Zen has left the Academy. He left a note before leaving that he was going in search of the mythic Aquarian. Kriya wonders if Zen has gotten some sort of clue before taking the decision. On the other hand, Andy still remains depressed because of the issue between him and Mix. He is busy digging holes around the Academy due to his unstable emotional state. His friends have no clue what is wrong with him, but Mix knows. She can't tell anyone one yet because she feels guilty. Later on, Zessica receives an invitation from one of the guys. He wants Zessica to go on a date with him. Zessica is considering the offer because she wants to get over how Amada rejected her. She just wants to do things that will get her mind off of things. At the yard, Mikono receives a letter from her father. She sees Amada running towards her and she hides the letter. She then realizes that there is no need for her to hide the letter. There is nothing she cannot discuss with Amada. She tells Amada that the letter is from her father, but she has not read the contents yet. Mikono informs Amada that she and her father were never close, because she didn't have elemental powers. Her father was only close to Cayenne, so it is a surprise that she is getting a letter from him. Amada also says he has no knowledge of his father, but he has some memories of his mother. Later that night, Mikono reads the letter, but after reading it, she takes the letter to her brother. Kagura is busy searching through the base for Mikono. He smells all the girls in his presence to see if any of them are Mikono, but they are not. On the other hand, Yunoha informs Jin that he has his device with her. She reveals that she has heard the message that was meant for him. She brings out the device to show her, and he grabs it. There is an explosion beside them and Yunoha passes out from fear. The authorities are already evacuating the students to avoid casualties. However, there are still 20 students missing. Mikono, Amada, and Zesika have all managed to make it to the hangar, and they are ready to move out with their vectors. The trio merges in Aquarian and goes after Kagura. Kagura spots them and smiles. He has been looking for the Mikono. It surprises the trio when Kagura calls Mikono Silphy. Kagura charges toward Aquarian and they have no way to stop him. It is very evident that he is more powerful than the last time they fought. He has improved his suit and he is using more power. Zen explains that Kagura is using the power of reversal. It appears that he has elemental powers also. On the other hand, Jin has taken Yunoha to the hangar. She wakes up to see Jin preparing one of the vectors. Jin reveals his intention to take Yunoha with him to his planet. Yunoha wants him to join them in battling Kagura, but he refuses. He has his own mission to attend to, he says. The moment he activates the vector, those in the operation room receive the alert that one of the reserved vectors has been activated. The camera reveals that the traitor is Jin. Kayan is angry because he was right after all. He offers to go after Jin and stop him. The battle between Aquarian and Kagura continues. They wonder why Kagura is so much stronger than last time. They get to find out that he is being powered by a strange aura. The aura is being transferred from an ethereal tube directly from Altair. Mikaj is the one helping Kagura through the dimensional gate. The solution they have is to cut off the dimensional gate. Once they do that, they will be able to cut off the energy being supplied to Kagura. Just then, Mikage appears to those in the operations room. This comes as a shock to everyone in the room because of his ability to use teleportation skills. It appears that Zen and Donar know who Mikage is. Back in the hangar, Yunoha tries to convince Jin not to betray their trust, but he shrugs it off. His mission is more important to him. He powers up the vector and prepares to leave the planet. Kayan arrives there too late. Those in the operations room are attacked by Mikage. Donar jumps on Suomi to protect her and he passes out in the process. Suomi, Kreia, and Zen are the only ones left to interact with Mikage. Zen and Mikage start to talk like they have a relationship with each other. As Jin is about to pass through the dimensional gate, Yunoha sheds tears asking him to reconsider his choices because their friends need their help. Kagura has defeated Aquarian, and he opens up the hatch to carry out Makono. He is still celebrating his win when Amada regains consciousness. Amada activates the wings on his legs and snatches Makono away from Kagura. He didn't get far because Kagura shot him down. Kagura aims to kill Amada because he has no use for him. 
Back in the operations room, Mikeage faces Zen and demands that he tell him the whereabouts of the Solar Wings. Just then, Donar regains consciousness and shoots Mikeage with a blast gun, but he easily blocks the attack. Mikeage decides to retreat for now. Kagura is about to eliminate Amada when Andy shows up. He traps him in one of his holes. Amada and Makono are able to reunite with Andy and Mix. Kagura angrily busts out of the hole with the intention of eliminating them. The arrival of other vectors prevented this. The director immediately orders the elements to merge again. It comes as a surprise when Jin and Yunoha return. Yunoha has convinced Jin to help out. Jin wants to merge with them also. Mikeage appears to Jin and decides that he needs to be punished for his betrayal. He touches Jin's head, and he gets injured. Jin comes out fine from the attack, and asks the elements to merge with him. The elements merge, and they have two Aquarian to battle Kagura. They knock Kagura into a rock, but he retaliates with a powerful counterattack. The team knows that they need to cut off the dimensional gate to defeat Kagura. Jin offers a solution for this. Jin activates his power, and all the other elements support him in creating a massive wave that destroys the gate. After they have successfully closed the gate, Kagura charges toward them, but Jin uses all of his strength to protect his friends. Kayan finishes off Kagura, and they come out victorious. However, the injury on Jin's forehead has grown worse, and he becomes unresponsive. His device falls from his pocket, and it plays a recording of how much he likes Yunoha. After the dust has settled, it is revealed that Jin didn't make it, and he died from his injuries. Jin and several others were casualties during the battle. There is a funeral procession for the dead. They are laid in the church, and they are given flowers. Back on Altair, Izumo has found out that Jin is dead. He blames Maikaj for Jin's death. My Mikage is also trying to instigate a rebellion in the city. Mikage explains to Izumo that he had to do what he did to make life easy for them on Altair. Altair is dying out already and they need a solution fast. They need to get females to the planet to be able to continue the next generation. Izumo somewhat understands where Mikage is coming from, and he asks for Jin's forgiveness. However, he hopes that Jin will not forgive him and Altair for what they did to him. Back on Vega, the dead are taken from the church and they are to be transported to the cemetery. Yunoha has refused to show herself since Jin died. She has locked herself in a room and refuses to come out. Mikono is worried, but they don't want to disturb her. They want her to have her space and grief alone. Mikono is alone when he is approached by Zen. Zen implores Mikono to approach Yunoha and try to get her out of isolation. Mikono initially refuses because she wants Yunoha to grieve in her own way. Mikono changes her mind when Zen informs her that Yunoha will lose herself if she continues that way. She will end up destroying herself without even realizing it. Mikono doesn't want this to happen, and she agrees to find Yunoha and get her out of the house. Mikono makes her way to where Yunoha is staying. She brings food for Yunoha to try and get her out of her bad mood. Yunoha blames herself for not just accepting to follow Jin. She claims that Jin would still be alive if she had followed him. Mikono wants Yunoha to follow her so she can pay her last respects to Jin. Yunoha is hesitant to leave the room, but she later agrees to. Elsewhere, Amada is busy packing Jin's belongings. The device falls off and displays Silphie's image. Amada wonders if his mother is currently on Altair. Shortly afterward, the students head to the cemetery. While they are on the boat, some of the students have already made up their mind to quit the school. The latest event has had a rather negative impact on most of the students, and they are all scared for their well-being. Mix tries to convince them, but Andy stops him. He doesn't want her to change the students' minds against their own will. Minutes later, they arrive at the cemetery, and the dead are laid to rest. Just then, Zen tells Andy to dig multiple holes. He doesn't tell them what he wants the holes for. Kriya informs the students that they have been able to find out about Altair's mission. Their aim is to kidnap female elements and use them for reproduction purposes. Because of this, there are more battles to be fought. There are bound to be more dead in the course of the battle. If they are to survive the battle in front of them, Zen wants the students to die first. He tells them to get into the holes and bury themselves inside. He says the process is part of their training. Makono and some of the students get angry that Zen is being insensitive. Their comrades just died and this is what he is saying to them. Zen then explains why they need to do it. He wants them to cut off their attachment to the living. Shrade is the first to do as ordered, and he gets into the hole. Yunoha joins him and before before Mikono realizes it, all of them have jumped into the holes. The only ones left are Mikono and Amada. Mikono says she is not getting into the hole. Zen tells her that she is free to do whatever she wants to do. He gets behind Mikono using super speed and grabs Amada. He throws him into the hole and all the holes are immediately sealed up. The only person left on surface is Mikono and the school authority. Moments later, some of the students ran out of the holes out of fear. Meanwhile, Mikaj has realized what Zen is trying to do. He is also burying Kagura alongside the students to make him powerful. Amada and his friends start Start to feel comfortable inside the holes. They are able to feel and connect through the silence. Mikono is worried about them and wants to dig them out, but soon finds out that her power connects them. Her friends are able to bloom like mushrooms because of her. Her 
friends are able to draw from her power and get the fear of death from their minds. Amada and the rest are reborn, and they burst out of their graves. Mikono faces Amada and greets him with a happy birthday. They were still celebrating their win when Kagura burst out of one of the holes. They had no idea that he was also being buried in the same cemetery as them. Zen can see the killer intent on Kagura's face, and he gets Kriya out of there. He leaves the students to battle Kagura. He wants to see how far they have come with their new revival. Dorn tells the girls to leave since Kagura is after girls. He draws his sword and charges toward Kagura, but Kagura uses his energy blast to destroy the sword and throw Donar off balance. Andy gets into the fight and he creates holes under Kagura. He falls into the holes and Mix fills them up. They believe that this is enough to stop Kagura, but he shocks them and bursts out of there. He grabs Mix but throws her away because she is not the one he wants. He is after Mikono, and even Mikono wonders why the guy is chasing her around. Amada tells his friends to get Mikono out of there before Kagura grabs her. Two of the students grab Mikono and take her away from the scene to keep her safe. Kayan charges toward Kagura, but he easily knocks him down. Amada tries his luck too, but Kagura is too strong for them. He cuts through them and turns into a beast to chase after the car carrying Mikono. He is stopped by Shred. Shred uses his sound skill to cause Kagura pain. He pins him down with the sound, but Kagura manages to break free of Shred's charm and continues his chase. He soon catches up to them and he uses his reversal skill to change the car's gear from drive to reverse. The car crashes into a tree, and Kagura grabs Makono before anyone else can stop him. He takes Makono to a tower where he hides her. The search for Makono begins, and resources are thrown into this. Donar, Andy, Yunoha, and Mix are in the helicopter searching for the missing maiden. The rest of the team is to continue with the ground search. Makono wakes up to find herself at the top of a tower. Kagura is standing watch over and he is making sure that the helicopter light doesn't see them. He uses his hand to cover her mouth when the helicopter is nearby to prevent her from making noise or calling the attention of her friends. Kagura tries to contact Mikaj to inform him that he has secured the package but he is not receiving any response. He believes that Mikaj is not hearing him, but unknown to him. Mikaj is choosing to ignore him. Elsewhere, Zesika tells Amada not to worry himself too much about Makono. She is quite sure that Kagura will not do anything to hurt Makono. Amada asks her why she is very sure about what she is saying. She reveals that Kagura is Makono's man of destiny. Now on the tower, Kagura assures Makono that he won't hurt her. He even licks Makono's wound and calls her Silphie. Makono notices that this isn't the first time Kagura will be calling her Silphy. He then narrates the story. At the same time, Zesika is narrating the story for Amada. The story explains that the Tree of Life was withering and needed saving. In order to do this, the two lovers agree to separate with the promise of finding each other later on. No matter how far it takes, they promise to find each other. These two lovers are Apollon and Silphy. Kagura is revealed to be Silphy, and he sees Silphy's image in Mikono. This is the reason he has been chasing her. Zesika hopes that Kagura is truly Mikono's destiny, so she can have a chance with Amada. Just then, they hear a bang come from the tower, and they are able to deduce that Kagura is hiding out there. They run over to the tower, and Amada tries to get to Mikono, but he is stopped by Kagura. He falls to the ground, and Kagura comes after him. He tells Zesika to contact Kayan and tell him where they are. He wants to distract Kagura so Makono will easily be rescued. He runs away, and Kagura chases after him out of rage. The helicopter soon finds Makono where she is hanging on. Kagura soon catches up to Amada and he beats him up. Amada tries to fight back, but he is no match for Kagura. Kagura punches him to the wall, and Amada passes out. While he is out, he thinks about the darkness and his connection to the darkness. Because he is already reborn in the darkness, he manages to find his way out of it. Amada finds a new source of power, and he starts to levitate. Kagura tries to blast him away, but an energy shield appears around him and stops the attack. Kagura is still cooking up another attack, when Kayan shows up and shoots him from behind. Kagura manages to throw Kayan off balance, and the gun falls to where Amada is. Kayan tells Amada to finish him off. Amada picks up the gun, and is about to end Kagura, when Makono shows up and stops them. She tells Amada not to end Kagura. Suddenly, flower petals appear and cover Kagura. Kagura then floats away with the petals. After Kagura's escape, Kreia calls Makono to her office. To punish her, she is banned from leaving her dorm. This is not her official punishment but she is to serve this punishment before Kreia decides what to do to her officially. This is to punish Mikono for allowing Kagura to escape their grasp. After she leaves the office, Mikono runs into Yunoha. Yunoha informs Mikono that she is there to support her no matter the situation she finds herself in. Mikono wonders why she did what she did. There are things she still does not understand concerning the matter. Meanwhile, Andy and Amada are listening to the duo's conversation. They are using their secret hole to spy on her and hear everything she is saying. The two guys return to their dorm to talk about what they heard. Amada wonders if their fate has really been decided 12,000 years ago. He wonders if they are really connected. Andy says there is the possibility of that. He is connected to Mix through holes, and Amada 
needs to find his own connection to Makono. Andy suggests that the duo is connected via Shushu. In order to get to Makono, Amada needs to please Shushu. In case you forget, Shushu is Makono's pet. Amada makes his way to the grocery store to buy things that he thinks Shushu will like. Zesika sees him leave the store and she is worried about what she told Amada. She feels like taking back her words, but Mix tells her that there is no need to. Back on Altair, the city that they are living in called the Iron Sea has started developing issues. The power output has decreased, and this has Izuma worried. He reveals that the city was created by his mother, Oriza, and he needs to find a solution to the problem. In the next scene, Zen reveals his idea to take the elements through real combat training. They are to train like they are, on the battleground. This is to prepare them for the battles to come. He already has combinations for the training. There is Cayenne, Bianca, and Malloy. They are to fight against Amada, Zesica, and Makono. Soon afterward, the elements and their vectors arrive at the battleground. They merge together to become Aquarian. Zen tells them that they are free to use elemental powers against each other. They are to treat each other like enemies. It is Team Amada versus Team Cayenne. Cayenne wants to see if Amada has what it takes to protect his sister, and he is the first to pull the trigger. Team Cayenne is on the offense while Team Amada remains on defense. Cayenne and his team go hard against Team Amada. Amada finds it hard to fight the opponent. Their elemental powers have received a boost since the grave training, but only Team Cayenne is making good use of the boost. Team Amada, on the other hand, is just sitting ducks. They have no reply to everything Cayenne is throwing at them. Cayenne's Aquarian has the reach on them because it is built to engage in long-distance battles. Cayenne has also gained the ability to see three seconds farther into the future, so he is able to clearly predict the opponent's movement and tactics. During the battle, Amada needs some sort of motivation to get themselves out of the mess they are in. Zesica decides to tell Amada how she feels about him. She gets close to Amada and finds it hard to open her mouth. An attack is imminent, and the suit manages to dodge it. During this process, Zesica informs Amada that she loves him. Amada couldn't hear it because of the explosion. He asks Zesica what she was trying to say, but she can't bring herself to repeat it. Zesica realizes that the opportunity might not present itself again. She holds Amada's head and tells him to his face that she loves him. Her words echo through the whole area, and those in the operations room are left dumbfounded. Just as she said this, Amada's aquarium starts to move on its own. It has reached some sort of evolution because of love. The Aquarian Evo creates a powerful Mugen punch that leaves everyone dumbfounded. Zen tells those watching that this is the start of the forbidden love. The Mugen Punch creates a series of images. They see another Aquarian that is not theirs. They see two men battling each other, and one of them resembles Zen. Mikono seems to know the other person, but she has no idea where she knows him. It turns out that the images they are being shown are from 12,000 years ago. It is actually Sylvia, and not Sylphie. The punch causes a massive explosion that disrupts the video connection. There is also the possibility that the island is completely destroyed. When the dust settles, they find out that the two Aquarians are okay. However, the entire island is destroyed. The team wonders what sort of power they have just unlocked with the forbidden love. Zesica is aware that her confession of love is what caused the sudden rise of a power that almost killed everyone. Upon returning to the academy, Amada tries talking to Zesica concerning what she said, but she finds it hard to do so. Zesica tells him that there is no need for him to stress himself. She understands him and she is not putting any pressure on him. Zesica walks away, but Amada tries dragging her back. While they are doing Doing this, Mikono sees the two and Amit quickly leaves Zesica's hand. Mikono gets jealous and runs away. Amada tries to follow her, but Shushu jumps on his face and scratches him to dissuade him from following them. Later that day, Mikono finds Zesica where she is reminiscing about her decisions. Zesica opts not to talk about the events of the day. On the other hand, Mix is angry that some of them are still thinking of romance, even though they have battles to fight. Amada is receiving romance lectures from his friends inside the dorm. Just then, Amada and the rest are summoned by Zen and Kreya. It is an emergency and they need to report immediately. Zen informs the team that he is sending them on a top secret mission. The details of the mission, the location, and the contents of the mission are all hidden, so there will be no answer to any of their questions. The Vectors have been programmed to take them to the site of the mission. The Vectors have also been stocked with supplies to make their mission easy. The following day, the students begin their journey to the unknown location. Sumoi is the only adult with the students. She has no idea what their mission is about too. The only people who know about the details of the mission are Kreia and Zen. Amada suspects that they are being sent on a mission to dig out the mythic Aquarian. Mikona wonders if it won't be dangerous to dig out the mythic Aquarian. Meanwhile, Mikaj is also monitoring the situation, and he believes that Zen is already making the first move. Soon afterward, they arrive at an island which appears to be their destination. Upon getting there, the commander tells them that they are free to do whatever they want while they await further instructions on what to do. Kriya informs the students that there are swim suits inside the vectors for them to use. Moments later, the boys sit down to fish. While they are doing so, Mix and the rest of the girls are busy playing. Mix is playing with bananas when she accidentally hits Andy in the head. She takes Andy to the ship to treat his 
injury. After she is done, Andy stops her from leaving. He wants to confess his love for Mix, but he needs to find the courage to do so. Meanwhile, Zessica is now with the rest of the team. She has secluded herself. She is enjoying the peace and quiet when Makono finds her. The duo decides to stay together. Andy keeps stuttering and eventually lets it out that he wants to fill Mix's hole. He meant to say he wanted to fill the hole in her heart, but said the wrong thing. Mix gets mad and punches him in the head. She angrily leaves the ship and abandons him inside. Makono and Zessica are busy discussing what the boys want when the weather suddenly changes. Meanwhile, Andy is inside the ship. He feels sad about his rejection. He feels like getting buried inside a hole. He subconsciously starts to dig a hole where he is sitting. Outside the ship, a dimensional gate opens, and an abductor surfaces from the gate. Cayenne, Malloy, and Amada quickly don their aquarium to fight the abductor. Mix and the rest enter the ship to take refuge in the hole Andy is digging. He continues digging without having a particular location that he wants to stop at. He has no idea that he has already dug a very deep hole. Shortly afterward, he makes an opening and falls into some sort of cave that contains an unknown object. Just then, Andy and all of those that are in the hole are ejected from it. They find themselves back on the surface. They suddenly find themselves inside the vector. All of the students are now present inside the vector, and they can all wield it together to face the abductor. The weather is getting colder with each minute that goes by. They charge toward the abductor with their immense power and deliver a powerful Mugen punch. The abductor is destroyed, and the students come out victorious. Back on Altair, Mike Cage is able to figure out that some of the components he is looking for are on the island. However, the main component of the solar wing has not yet been found. Upon returning to the academy, Zessica resumes with a new outfit, an outfit that doesn't expose her belly. Her friends are surprised as to why she changed her dress style. Zessica approaches Makono to tell her that she doesn't mind having a one-way love with Amada. She is aware that Amada doesn't feel the same toward her, but she is not ready to stop loving him. Up next, Kree is informed that Zen has left the academy. He left a note before leaving that he was going in search of the mythic Aquarian. Kriya wonders if Zen has gotten some sort of clue before taking the decision. On the other hand, Andy still remains depressed because of the issue between him and Mix. He is busy digging holes around the academy due to his unstable emotional state. His friends have no clue what is wrong with him, but Mix knows. She can't tell anyone yet because she feels guilty. Later on, Zessica receives an invitation from one of the guys. He wants Zessica to go on a date with him. Zessica is considering the offer because she wants to get over how Amada rejected her. She just wants to do things that will get her mind off of things. At the yard, Mikono receives a letter from her father. She sees Amada running towards her and she hides the letter. She then realizes that there is no need for her to hide the letter. There is nothing she cannot discuss with Amada. She tells Amada that the letter is from her father, but she has not read the contents yet. Mikono informs Amada that she and her father were never close close, because she didn't have elemental powers. Her father was only close to Cayenne, so it is a surprise that she is getting a letter from him. Amada also says he has no knowledge of his father, but he has some memories of his mother. Later that night, Mikono reads the letter, but after reading it, she takes the letter to her brother. Shrade realizes that they won't make it through the gate unless they merge. He is in no condition to merge, but he needs to do so for his friends. They merge and become Aquarian to have the chance of making it through the dimensional gate. Back in Vega, Kreia has called everyone together because because she has something important to tell them. Zen informs them that he is about to tell them about the myth that has been passed down from 24,000 years ago. He lifts his eye patch to reveal that he has always had the Book of the Twins stars with him. The team finds themselves in a giant book. It is time for Kriya to narrate everything to them and how the story unfolds. Shrade, Zessica, and Amada will also be able to see and hear as the story is narrated by Kriya. The first chapter happened 24,000 years ago when the angel Apollonius fell in love with the human Selene. Apollonius made use of the mechanical angel, the mythic Aquarian, to protect mankind and chase away the angels. The shadow angel, Toma, who was Apollonius's fiance, held a feeling of hatred and love toward Apollonius for betraying him. There is also another being who fell in love with Selene, and that is the winged dog, Pollen, who came with Apollonius. However, Pollen is well aware that his love will not be reciprocated by Selene because he is a dog. He wishes to be reincarnated as a human when he comes back to the world. There is Toma's hatred and Pollen's love. With this, the first chapter ends. 12,000 years ago, the second chapter begins. The people fought the angels with the use of the mechanical angel and the knowledge that has been passed down to them. The person who operated the mechanical angel then was a young man named Apollo. Meanwhile, Kagura has made it to Altair but he is faced with heavy resistance from the military. Continuing with the story, Apollo is the reincarnation of the winged dog, Pollen. His lover, Selene, also reincarnated as Sylvia. With fate, they met each other again. However, Toma was also reincarnated into this era, and he aimed to destroy everything that Apollonius built. Toma's hatred had destroyed the Shadow Angels. The tree of life that was planted to revive the Shadow Angels failed spectacularly without bearing any fruit. To save the world, Apollo had to say goodbye to Sylvia, his love, the love that he had waited 
waited thousands of years to have went away in the blink of an eye. His sacrifice signaled the beginning of the new world. It is now time for the third chapter of the story. The third chapter is about the present day and the story that is currently unfolding. When the Tree of Life died, this disrupted the balance of the world and the Earth split into two. The two pieces are what is now known as Vega and Altair. The two were originally one. In this era, Pollen was once again reincarnated as Alicia's child. However, someone else has reincarnated before him and he has all his memories. This person is Toma and he still seeks revenge. He used his power to split the reincarnation of Pollen, which is Amada, into two so he can use them for his own revenge purpose. Toma in this era is none other than Mikeji. Sylvia was also reincarnated into this era as Mikono. This is where the story ends for now. It is now up to the team to write the remaining stories. Mikono wakes up in Kagura's arms and the first thing she does is apologize to him for not noticing his feelings. Just then, Shred finally finds the right tune to his music. He creates the perfect tune and creates a way for his friends to make it out of the dimensional gate. As he plays his tune, he remembers everything about his life. Aquarian splits apart and Shred perishes in the dimensional gate. Cayenne can feel Shred's death on Vega and he cries for the loss of his dear friend and rival. The myth for the future has now been written in blood. Zessica and her vector land in Altair and she starts looking for Amada. She runs into Mikage who tells her that it is time to fulfill her promise. He takes over her body and locks her in the soul realm. Izumo and the abductors find Kagura where he is keeping Mikono and he demands that he hands over the girl but Kagura refuses. He is about to eliminate Kagura when Zessica arrives. Unknown to them, the person standing in front of them is my cage and not Zessica. Zessica tells Kagura that he is the chosen one and he should call on the mythic Aquarian. Kagura does as told and the mythic Aquarian shows up. Mikage, Mikono, and Kagura enter the Aquarian and they are faced by Izumo and his men. Mikage is glad that everything is going according to his plans. Back on Vega, the team is worried that the world is going imbalanced. They haven't heard from Amada and the rest, too. They need to get to Altair, but there is no gate to take them. Just then, Andy says he will find a way. He once created the gate by accident, but he will do it for real this time. He asks the director for permission, and she gives it to him. Now on Altair, the mythic Aquarian is surrounded by abductors. With one strike, the mythic Aquarian destroys all the abductors, leaving just Izumo. Izumo realizes that the mythic Aquarian is powerful, but he believes that his Guinness can stand up to the machine. He takes in the damage from the Aquarian and returns it. Kagura uses reversal power to block the attack. It is a standoff between the duo. Just then, then, Mix arrives to assist Izumo. Makono is surprised to see Mix. Back on Vega, Cayenne, Malloy, and Andy move out. Andy is able to create the dimensional gate because of his determination to save his lover. Now on Altair, Mix hears someone calling her name, but she is trying to fight it because she is now someone else. Kagura punches her around, and Makono tells him to stop because Mix is her friend. Izumo returns the favor and delivers a fatal blow to the mythic Aquarian. Elsewhere, Amada wakes up to the voice of someone calling him. He makes his way to the direction of the voice. The fight between the machines continues. Kagura knocks Mix to the ground and is about to deliver a finishing blow when Andy and his team show up in Aquarian Gephardt. Cayenne confirms from fake Zessica that Shrade is truly dead. Andy tries to get through to Mix with his words, but Mix doesn't want to. A fight breaks out between the two. The mythic Aquarian continues his assault on Izumo. Izumo asks Kagura if he doesn't want to save Altair, and he says yes. All he cares about is his woman. As long as he has Makono, he doesn't care if the world ends. Amada makes it to the pod station to find out that his mother is the one calling out to him. The fight between Andy and Mix still continues, and she is starting to remember all the good memories she had with Andy. Now in the cryo station, Amada yells at his mother for abandoning him all this while. Alicia says she is not asking for Amada's forgiveness, but she will tell him why she left. Alicia reveals that that Amada's father is Izumo. This comes as a shocker to Amada. Alicia then narrates how she met Izumo. Izumo came to Vega when their women died out in search of a rare woman. His aircraft crashed and Alicia found him. This was when Alicia was still an actress. She cared for him and saved him. The duo got close, and Izumo later returned to Altair without telling the authorities of what happened. However, he was sure that Maikaj knew what was going on. Izumo later returned after a few years, and Alicia had given birth to Amada. Izumo told her about what they are facing on Altair, and she volunteers to go because she loves Izumo. She didn't want to take Amada with her because she didn't want to put him in danger. This is the reason she left Amada in Vega. Alicia came to Altair because of her lover and what her lover loves. Upon hearing this, Amada reveals that he had always been angry at Alicia, but he has now forgiven her. He he understands why she left him. Izumo is still battling Kagura. Izumo tells Kagura that he cannot lose to him because he is not ready to let Alicia's sacrifice go to waste. Just then, Izumo takes all the energy from the city into his machine. He is now extremely powerful and dangerous. He fires a warning shot that the mythic Aquarian finds hard to dodge. He tells Kagura to give up or he will finish him off. Seeing this, my cage takes control of the mythic Aquarian and shoots towards the cryo station where Alicia is. This is able to distract Izumo, 
and he flies in the direction of the cryo station. The explosion eliminates Alicia, but Amada manages to make it out of there. Amada is now vengeful because of his mother's death. Because Izumo has his back turned on Kagura, Mikage tells him to end him when he has the chance. Kagura penetrates Izumo's armor with the Mugen Punch. This is definitely the end of the line for Izumo. However, Izumo shocks them when he makes a U-turn and fires off a powerful blast that splits the mythic Aquarian into vector machines. The machines fall off, and Izumo also crash lands near the cryo station. Amada ran toward his father's crash site. He helps Izumo up and tells him that he now knows everything. Izumo apologizes for taking Alicia away from Amada. Just then, Izumo notices the presence of mayflies in the area. He says mayflies disappeared when the women also died out. It then dawns on him that the place he crash-landed into was destroyed. That part of the Iron City is destroyed. He finally realizes that the construction of the Iron Sea City was the cause of the women's deaths. The city has been drawing the mother's energy from the planet causing the females to die off. Izumo falls to the ground with the mind that his whole life has been futile. He passes on with this in mind, but Alicia's spirit appears to him and takes him away. Amada can also see his mother's spirit. Alicia assures Izumo that his effort will not be in vain. Their son will reunite the two worlds. Amada is the product of their love. Everything Amada can now think about is revenge. He blames Kagura for taking away the two people he has always longed for. He is determined to never forgive Kagura for this. Elsewhere, Kagura wakes up inside his vector machine and immediately starts looking for Mikono. He looks back to see Amada's vector coming toward him. He is coming with a vengeful heart and Kagura can even feel it. Amada blames blames him for killing their father. He informs Kagura that Izumo is their father, and he is now dead because of him. Amada transforms into an incomplete mechanical angel and knocks Kagura to the rock. Kagura realizes that he is one with Amada which means he should be able to transform just like him. Kagura transforms into an incomplete mechanical angel, just like Amada and the battle continues. With the two soul fragments against each other, Altair leaves its orbit and starts moving toward Vega. It is clearly visible in Vega's atmosphere. Those on Vega are already worried about this. Meanwhile, Andy is still battling with Mix. He is trying to get her to come back to her senses. He has used so much of his power, but Mix is still rejecting him. Cayenne tells Andy to be careful because he might pass out from the excessive use of his power. Andy pins Mix to a rock. He comes out of the machine and walks toward Mix. He tries to reach Mix with his words, but it is not working. Mix is about to terminate Andy when he talks about filling up the big hole in her heart. This immediately triggers Mix's memories and all the gaps in her memories are filled. She comes back to her senses and remembers who Andy is. Mix is shy to face Andy, but he assures her that he will always be with her no matter who she is. He is ready to stay with her even if she is a guy. Andy and Mix are finally ready to merge after all this while. They are about to do this when Kreia substitutes them with Yunoha. The fight between Kagura and Amada continues. Amada condemns Kagura for having everything he ever wanted on Altair, and he still went ahead to ruin it. Kagura then reveals that he had no idea that their parents were on Altair. He was raised by Mikage. Mikage raised him like a slave, and he never for once felt comfortable when he was with Mikage. Kagura punches Amada into the river, but Kagura comes back out because of his will to punish Kagura. With Altair getting closer to Vega, Kreia leaves her seat to find Zen. Zen knows what Mikage is trying to do. He wants to merge the two worlds together to become one so he can be the ruler. Kreia asks Zen if he wants Mikage to succeed with his plan. Kreia receives no answer from Zen. Zen. Instead of answering the question, Zen disappears. As the battle between the duo continues, Mikono wakes up in one of the vector machines. She sees the two fighting. She is hurt by this and says the two should not be fighting. She takes off and goes after the two, but Mikaj intercepts her. He tells her that she will be merging with him and not the two. Mikono finally realizes that Mikaj has taken over Zesika's body. He narrates how he was betrayed by his love. When Apollo brought the offer for them to merge and save the world, he accepted. He thought Apollo was the reincarnation of Apollonius. It was during the merging that he realized that he was wrong. He was betrayed by Apollonius twice. This is the reason he wants to create a world of his own and be the ruler. Mikage forcefully merges with Mikono, and this causes her to scream out in pain. Amada and Kagura hear her scream. Mikage transforms into an incomplete Aquarian. He needs one more part to be complete. He starts to take in all the energy in Altair. Just then, Malloy, Cayenne, and Yunoha arrive. Malloy tells Amada to take his place and merge with the team. Amada accepts the offer and they merge into Aquarian Evil. Amada charges toward Mikage, but he easily repels his attacks. Mikage makes fun of Amada for thinking he can defeat him with such a weak machine. Mikage forces Kagura to bend to his will, and he takes over his vector forcefully too. With this, Mikage has three parts. 
He transforms into a dark Aquarian. He stands tall in the sky. The stage is now set for the final battle between Mikage and the team. It is Dark Aquarian versus Aquarian Evil. Amada throws the Mugen Punch at Mikage, but he easily catches the punch and replies with four attack punches that leave Amada and his shaking. Kagura wakes up in the labyrinth of Mikage's mind and sees Zesika. She is also trapped inside Mikage's mind. She asks Kagura to terminate her so Mikage will no longer be able to operate. This is the only sacrifice she can make for Amada, she says. Her love for Amada is strong, but she doesn't want Amada to lose Mikono. Mikage currently has Amada and his team in a chokehold. Amada and his team are already scared that the merging will be cancelled if it continues. Kagura holds Zesika's neck and presses it tight. Life starts to leave Zesika's body slowly. At the same time, Mikage is affected by this and he is forced to release Amada and his team. Just then, Kagura changes his mind. He doesn't want Zesika to die for Amada. Mikage gets angry and says he doesn't need Zesika or Kagura again. Since he already has Mikono, who is the absolute power, she is the one he needs to merge with. He ejects Zesika and Kagura from his mind and merges with only Mikono. He then awakens a dark sun that covers Vega. Everywhere starts to get hot, and it will make everything dry up if care is not taken. Kayan and Yunoha are forcibly ejected, cancelling the merging. Amada has no way of fighting Mikaj with just one vector machine. Just then, Mix and Andy show up to support him. To make things easier, Shrade's soul also provides melody for the team. Zesika and Malloy also join the fight. To make everything complete, Director Kriya also volunteers to pilot one of the machines and merge with them. Kayan and Yunoha return to their machines also. They now have more than enough hands to fight my cage. Shrade continues to help the team with the melody of his soul. They all merge together to form their respective Aquarian. Even with all hands on deck, my cage appears to be tougher than expected. Several attacks are thrown at the machine, but he easily takes in the damage. Amada is not ready to give up, and he continues to to charge at my cage. Mikaj is forced to extend his arms and draw the two planets to each other. With this, he starts sucking the life out of them. Now in Mikaj's mind, Mikono sees an image of Mikaj in pain. He feels betrayed because Mikono took away the person he loves. She gets scared and turns away, but Zen appears to her. He tells her to continue watching because there are things she needs to see. After Zen has said this, he disappears again. Mikaj punches Amada's Aquarian and forces it to split up. Zesika and Kagura see this and they jump in to assist. Amada is surprised to see the two. He thanks them both for their help, they merge together to become Aquarian Evil once again. Now in McCage's mind, Mikono can clearly see how much Mikage loves Apollonius. Mikono realizes that she has been the cause of the breakage between the two. She faces Mikage and apologizes to him. She tells him that he can do whatever he wants to her, but he should spare those in the world. Just then, Amada comes rushing. Zesika and Kagura provide for him, but Mikage shoots them away with an energy blast. The elements get thrown away, and Amada finds himself flying in a soul state. Just then, Jin's voice resonates with Yunoha. He reminds her that they are always together, and he didn't leave. Yunoha powers up the machine and shoots a powerful blast at Mikage. Amada continues drifting in the soul state, but the voices of his friends call out to him. His parents' voices also call out to him at that moment. Amada snaps out of the state and activates his wings. He is able to carry Aquarian and easily move around my cage. Kagura also provides support to Amada. Even with all the obstacles in front of him, Amada is able to escape them and grabs Mikono away from my cage. The Aquarian's name changes from evil to love. Amada and Mikono show their powerful love to everyone by kissing. The tears from their eyes soak the planet and reverse the effect of the dark sun. Their love also connects the two planets together. The torn apart worlds are connected because of Amada and Makono's love for each other. Mikaj's soul is evicted, and he flies through space. Just then, he gets caught in Zen's hands. It turns out that Zen is the Apollonius of this era. Apollonius places Mikaj in his heart, so he can continue to sleep there. Even though Apollonius has betrayed him twice, Mikaj seems to find comfort within his soul. After the dust has settled, Amada emerges from the water carrying Mikono in his hands. Everyone, including Kagura, rushes over to meet them. Zen appears and tells everyone that the ban on romance is now officially lifted. With this, Amada and Mikono's love rewrites the myth from 24,000 years ago and sets everything straight.